Hey there, audiobook enthusiasts. Welcome to the audiobook collection. Today's upcoming audiobook is a special shout out to one of our amazing Patreon backers. If you're keen on personalized requests, consider becoming a part of our Patreon community. The link is in the video description below. Your support is truly appreciated, and I'm grateful to have you with me on this exciting audiobook adventure. And hey, if you're looking for a bundle of 300 plus novels, swing by my Kofi shop. For just $35, you can snag a Google Drive link to an audiobook treasure trove. Additionally, if you want to show some love to the original author of this novel, check out the author's credits discreetly provided in the description. Your support makes a difference. Thanks for being part of this literary journey with me. Chapter 51 Chapter 51 Cursed Diary 2 So, what the plan? You gonna play the righteous hero and demand the dark diary from the shady looking gentleman come side villain or gonna play the assassin? You know old school stabby stabby in backy backy, Merlin asks as if this was all a game to him. I will play the patient kind, he is here to get rid of the diary anyway, so I'll just let him. Sigh, Merlin just trolled his eyes and groaned, man seriously need didaction in his life, but why make me the object of his entertainment? I my rand and took out a book from the shelf and pretended to read it, while also secretly following Malfoy Senior. But after noticing that the man was moving dangerously close to one lustrous entity which graced us with his presence, I just groaned. I was trying to avoid Gilderoy Lockhart, I believe that there is no reason needed for me to explain to the readers right? The man was a total fraud, the only thing which he had really going for him was his talent in building lies and memory charms, not to mention, that the man did look handsome. Not a lot but still better than most adult wizards, in fact in the movies he was not as handsome. I hate handsome men more than I love beautiful women, being a pretty average guy in my last life, this was always a sore spot for me, this and my little friends who were, well a little too little for my liking. Merlin on the sideline just wanted to point out that in this life, Orion might be the most handsome man as time goes, not only because of his natural good look but because he absorbed a freaking unicorn. It is taking some time for him to adapt to the traits of a unicorn but when he will, girls can hardly remove eyes from him. And when it comes to his pee, -pee Merlin had no idea but only future will tell, just how magical that can be. I followed Lucius for 20 minutes and the man was one savvy customer, just looking around and wasting my time, I am sure that he didn't notice my presence so I don't know why he was taking so much time to just throw the book away. Probably because he just doesn't want to throw it away, he wants to send the book to Hogwarts, maybe in the book and movies it was not clear why I gave the book to Ginny but there is a possibility that it was a planned action, Merlin said from inside my ear like a whisper and my fast thinking already started to catch up with all the possible routes this scenario can go. Son of a bitch, I couldn't help but mutter to myself, and with that started planning. Didn't take me long to find a simple method to take the diary, gonna use force to mix the diary with many of the similar looking books and diaries on the bookshelf towards the south section of the store, just needed to lure him to that place. Use this spell, always worked for me, Merlin said while transferring the spell information into my head directly. I blink and look a little confused, the spell works on someone's smell, how is that gonna help me? But before Merlin can answer, I suddenly understand what Merlin was trying to do here. I then went towards the south section of the store and hurriedly put two basic runes in the floor to stop Lucius from using Axio to find the book. Yes now I don't even need a wand to place the runic array as I am proficient enough to do that by just placing my magic signature there, but this new spell Merlin taught me was a different case. Targeting Lucius I said, Odores Mutatio, and then almost an invisible spatial fluctuation happened, only targeting Malfoy. Dash. Lucius Malfoy Poff. Lucius Malfoy was having a bad day, the ministry just recently raided many of the Pulard houses to find any kind of dark artifact among them. He was still now excluded from this list, an advantage of holding significant power but for how long? Thus he was trying his damnest to clear out all of his inventory and backlogs. The search was not just limited to dark items but also all kinds of illegal things and connections by the ministry. Lucius now missed that day when he used to work with Voldemort, yes the man was deranged and a madman who only looked for himself, but he was strong and that apparently was all that mattered in this world. Well, not strong enough, Lucius mutters silently, thinking about how the greatest dark lord of all time died under the hands of a newborn child. He couldn't help but scoff at the underdeveloped brain circuits of wizards nowadays, every one of them is nothing but sheep, and Dumbledore is the biggest ringmaster. Others might not realize but Dark Eaters do, a positive side of following the Dark Lord, he saw the reality of Dumbledore. 
In Lucia's eyes, Dumbledore was nothing less than a Dark Lord. But he was not here today to debate about someone's morale or character. His own moral compass was all wax shit so no, he was here today to make sure that his diary which his lord gave him. That half-blood is no lord of mine, but I can't do anything against him. Weakness is the original sin, Lucius just sighed. He knew the reality behind the supposed lord and the messiah of the Pulard people, that half-blood bastard was a psychopath and a sociopath who killed his own family, but Lucius would not tell this to anyone, he couldn't even let anyone get the suspicion that he knows this. He know that the Dark Lord is not dead and will eventually come back, no he will stay in the dark and follow the Dark Lord. In light, he can't achieve anything, although he doesn't comply with the Dark Lord he gets benefits by following him, and that's all that is needed. Lucius today was here because he wanted to use this opportunity to get rid of the cursed item and at the same time, cause trouble for those blood traitors Weasleys. So he waited until those damned red hair blood traitors comes. He knew that it will be today that they will arrive considering that Ministry give the salary to its employees yesterday, Arthur need that money to bring anything to his kids. Beggars, Lucius scoffed in disdain but then suddenly smelled an alluring smell coming from the bookshelf on the south, it attracted his attention, the smell was really something which made his tense up mind relax. So he went there, just to figure out what that thing was. Dash. MC Poff. The moment when Lucius went close to the south section of the store, he found the pleasant smell intensified as he got close to the bookshelf. Got him, Merlin smirked alongside me as I raised my hands and suddenly the entire blood bookshelf shooked. I already made the footing of the shelf lose with magic and now just need a little bit of force, pun intended, to complete throw the fucking bookshelf on Lucius. Suddenly the entire bookshelf looked like it was alive, or like an earthquake hit diagonally. It shook and Lucius, who was still in euphoria bought out of his days and took out his wand, due to years of reflexes kicking in. But that was pointless as until his mind really figured out what was going on, it was too late, the entire bookshelf ended up falling on the poor bastard. I with one hand tilted the bookshelf with force while on the other hand, using the force to drag Tom Riddles his diary towards me. Lucius didn't even notice that he lost the diary. I saw the diary come towards me like a lightsaber or Thor's hammer, directly into my hand, and I didn't waste any time and put it inside my pendant. Score, now get the fuck out of his place, Merlin said and I just nodded while already moving out. By the way, why the rune when you were gonna put the diary directly on your pendant? Merlin asked in confusion. Because if the magic worked and he still didn't get the diary, then he would get suspicious. It's better to make him believe that the magic is not working for some reason and that the diary is among the piles of books and other diaries, that way he will be occupied and most likely not suspect that it was intentional. Chapter 52, Chapter 52, Title at the End So you geese must be waiting for the bonus chapter right, tell me when you want one, I can deliver it later today or I can deliver it by the ending of the week like Sunday night as mass release. 30. After burying Malfoy Sr. under two-inch piles of books, I got out of there. But I couldn't leave the shop considering that I still needed to work there, not leaving that two galleon, not after all the hard labor I had to do to get them. I even heard Merlin sighing on the side, but I don't give a shit, that man is a ghost, I need money for food, water, residency anything I have to pay for those things soon ah, there is no way I am leaving that two galleon. So after causing much trouble for Marcus, the bookshop owner. I sat on the sideline eating my lunch and waiting for some familiar faces, which didn't take much time considering I quickly noticed a very familiar redhead girl appearing with other redheads. At first glance, people can even say that they are from the same family but that was not the case. The hair color although the same, the shape of red was slightly off, not to mention the features of the girl were different than almost all the Weasley family she was following. Are this girl gonna be a keeper if got love early, Merlin on the sideline said and I also nodded in agreement, I didn't even need to ask why Merlin thought that about Rose. Being an orphan himself, I know that an orphan like them doesn't long for money or power but for family more than anything. Well until and unless you are not a certain snake face bastard who wanted to live forever, Merlin chimes in and I chuckle a little. Rose, I called out after seeing Mrs. Weasley going after Lockhart to get the upcoming books and also his autograph. I almost wanted to cry after looking at those expensive books which have no requirement in my magical education at all. I swear to God, I will punch that handsome face of his. One of these days, I unbelievably muttered after reminding myself that I had to spend two galleons on his books. Ron was with his brothers, while Ginny was accompanying Rose, seems to me that those two have become good friends, thinking about their intertwined faith in the books and movies. Orion, Rose after hearing me calling her immediately came over and Ginny was also with her. 
I just quickly introduced myself again. Hello, I am Orion D. Ambrosius, I said. Who introduces themselves with their full name and even the middle name, that's weird, Ginny said. I told him all the time, but he doesn't quit doing that, Rose giggled which almost sounded like sweet rings of bells to me. She smells good as well. I noticed that she has a little less baby fat on her cheeks as she also has gotten taller, but not that much. She was wearing a tight sweater which went well with her half-size skirt and I had to take a double take as I found that pretty cute. One minute. Why you are getting attracted towards her like this? It is not just you who is getting attracted, Merlin on the side said and I noticed a sizable blush on both of the girls' faces. I got even more confused. I could chuck that into them being happy meeting me but why not make eye contact anymore, Rose didn't have this problem before, they are obviously shy. Remember I told you that you will soon develop traits from unicorn, this is it, you are slowly building a kind of presence which I calm others and attracts them, pure and comfortable, that when added with your natural charm we have a recipe for a heart throb. At this slightly widened my eyes and internally nodded, considering that the traits are just starting to appear now, it will definitely be a lot more prominent later on. After all, it took almost six months before this physical power stopped increasing little by little. It was almost like his whole body was mutating according to the power he absorbed. Maybe this is the reason his absorbing power gets much weaker after digesting a magical creature. It takes time for him to adapt to that power. Yes, I too have noticed that and can say that it's not about how many creatures you absorb but how powerful they are and how many varieties of creatures you are absorbing will make you stronger. For example, if you were to absorb a troll now. You might not get an as strong boost as you get back then, as magically now that troll is much weaker than you. Not to mention you already have traits from troll and it will not gonna make you physically stronger, Merlin said his hypothesis and I had to agree. But can't say anything for the final without testing it out for myself. Let's get going, we better get books for you all. I also want to show you the broom which I made and my very own book, I said and brought the two blushing girls who themselves were confused as to why they were blushing in the first place and just couldn't stop blush after seeing Orion's face, out of their daze. I dragged the girls by their hands making them blush even more furiously and of course, I didn't it intentionally, you got a chance to tease cute girls like them when given a chance, be a man of culture. While taking them towards the broom on the displaced Pegasus I also noticed a familiar face which I didn't want to see, it was Nick Hyan. I kept a distance from him because as soon as he entered the shop, I felt a magical signature which was much much stronger than any normal student. Others can't sense magic like I can, thanks to my integration training and later my almost ungodly developed magical circuits whose worth I only learn later as I learn force, I have developed magical senses. He is even stronger than Rose here, and Rose is stronger than any normal student, even coming close to some 6th and 7th year students. There is no way someone can increase their magical power like that besides the dark arts, even you my friend whose existence is nothing less than a cheat with that integration of yours, needs time to fully digest the magical power and changes before absorbing more, Merlin said and I started to get worried. He was wearing normal dark clothes with his striking black hair and green eyes, those eyes just attracted my attention, they are similar to rose, vibrant and green. After thinking about this, I quickly steal a sneak glance at rose and compare. Yup, there is no denying it, they are so similar, no they are stronger, more vibrant and much darker in shade. Eyes are the window of souls, they can show many things and in the case of magical people, they can show the nature of a wizard and his strength. Nick Iron is strong, a little too strong. Not to mention the Elder Wand, that's why I worry. It was like just one look at the boy told me that he was not good, that I was no match for him right now, and that Nick Iron was just bad news. I looked at Rose, looking at the broom which I pointed towards, haven't said that I made it yet but that Quidditch Fang Earl stared at the broom with stars in her eyes. There was a very beautiful smile on her face. There soon will come a time when she will lose that smile, but I can protect it. Hey Merlin, I think that I should get a wand replacement, this one is just too weak, I asked knowing that I am currently like any normal magical child's magical level right now and this wand might be good enough for now but definitely not when I get strong like even 5th or 6th year's student level. The upcoming threats will need more than this lousy wand to be dealt with. Well, I shouldn't bad mouth the wand as it did serve me, sorry but I do need something better. No need, in fact, you will be ditching the wand altogether, outside the most intense combat situation from now on, Merlin said and I blinked took me some time to process what he had just said. Nanny, title. Chapter 53, Chapter 53, Lost the Train. 
I asked yesterday when you guys want the bonus chapters, but strangely there was no response. So here is what I will do for this week. I will release all the bonus chapters at on Sunday night. Before starting the chapter, I also want to say that I am converting back to the third person POF, and only use one ad POF when need to give more insights about the character. 30. Orion was in a bad mood. After the general shopping for Hogwarts, he wanted to get himself a new wand, but the old geezer didn't let him. We will learn wandless magic he says like it is as easy as sneaking around the castle after quarantine. Even the best among the current generation of wizards and witches needs wands, Orion muttered under his breath as he was packing his bag. He raised his hand and pointed his palm toward the clothes he wanted to take to Hogwarts with him, trying force to lift them and put them in his luggage, and after grinding like his life depended on it. Still, Orion was not able to control the force right. It was pretty easy to push or pull but doing anything complex like folding a shirt and putting it in the luggage was almost impossible. Remember that it's not just what you want, you have to convey this to the magic around you as well, Merlin said for god knows how many times to him but he just couldn't get a hold of it. Currently. His force usage is very bare bone, with basic push and pull ability, and range, weight and size limitations. Orion couldn't help but groan and took out his wand. This shit was getting out of hand, he was getting late for the Hogwarts Express, and he might lose the train if this continues. Not like this was not planned considering that Rose might also lose the train and why the fuck Orion will not try to spend more time with that cute redhead. Honestly he started to like Rose a little more than Hermione even after his obvious crush on Emma. Hermione as well, she is annoying and bossy at least at the start of the series, he didn't dislike her but still, he better liked the attitude of Rose over Hermione. You are not allowed to use wand, Merlin said with a stern tone, this old man was usually easy going but damn he can be a bothersome bastard at the very wrong time, like use force to open the door of the bathroom until Orion's bladder was about to blast open, like use force to stop the alarm early in the morning, bastard I want to stop the alarm to go back to sleep. Don't shout in my ears to use force. Orion woke up after all that shouting, unfortunately saying goodbye to his sweet sleep. After hearing Merlin, he grumbly put back his wand and kept on practicing force to make his luggage. He didn't have any option but to listen to him, as he was the only source to learn magic for him. At least the ancient magic and get stronger but the old man could be annoying. Once Orion starts slacking off, he starts to shout near his ear and even announce his dark history all in the public. Orion knows that no one can hear Merlin but something about an old man shouting in public at the top of his lungs how he once peed like a dog in the open with one leg up just to see how it felt like when he was a four years old, is embarrassing as hell, and yes, that level of dark history Merlin has access on Orion. My life is fuck, Orion mutter under his breath. Dash. King Cross Station. Orion knew that he would be late, so he couldn't help but curse under his breath as he got out of the taxi and rushed towards the station. He didn't even care about the pedestrians and got inside the station. Upon entering the station he felt like he had come back one year ago when he was ready to go to Hogwarts for the first time, it was magical and he couldn't deny it, it's almost like after many years I start my favorite game to play the campaign once again. Here we go again, Merlin smirks thinking about a certain CJ from Orion's memories, he can't remember which game that was though. Orion looked around trying to spot any familiar faces while also hurriedly moving towards platform 9 and 3 quarters, and when not seeing any familiar faces, the looming reality that he missed the train got harder to avoid. The moment he saw platform 9, he heard a sound. He quickly looked and saw a red-haired girl falling to the ground and all her things getting scattered on the floor. Rose, Orion immediately said as the little Lily looked up in panic. She hurt her head on the wall as she was covering the slightly swollen bump with two hands with a cute expression. Orion the wall, it's not letting me go through, Rose said and Orion surely caught a complaining tone in her sentence. Orion looked at the wall and yup, there was magic blocking Rose from going past, it's strange that it was only on Rose, and he knew that he himself could go past without much issue, this piqued his interest, the person who was responsible for this incident in books and movies was Dobby. I never thought about it this way but this house self just interacted with an old magic and was able to block a particular person go crossing it to some extent could be even harder to completely remove the magic, as this falls in the realm of complex magic, and a house self doing it was unique if not anything. We might want to meet with that house self, what you say, Merlin said and Orion on the side nodded. But he quickly came towards Rose to help her. Don't worry I will help you out, Orion said and after looking around and making sure that the standard notice me not spell was still in place and was working just fine, he raised his hand and applied force. 
To even Merrin's amazement, Orion not only gathered all the scattered things but he didn't do it one at a time like he used to do in his training, he targeted and moved all of them at once and even put them in the cart with the right order and orientation. What in there? Merlin was baffled. This kid was barely able to control a feather with force in the training and now he literally did what Merlin himself took decades to learn. Perfect multi-freaking object control and that too even without looking, not to mention he did it effortlessly with fucking wandless magic using force. Rose on the side was also wide-eyed like lightning struck her, the pain of her head long forgotten. Chantless and even wandless magic, she couldn't believe and started to question the degree of damage she just suffered on her head. Now started to get worried as she was seeing illusions. Orion made her stand up and return her glasses back to her. Here are your glasses, Orion gave the glasses to Rose and she after realizing that she didn't have her glasses on, relaxed a little, all the blame unconsciously and unfortunately fell on the poor glasses and her bad eyesight. Orion on the other hand didn't realize that he just used force at the master's level unconsciously, in order to quickly help out Rose. But Merlin was different, he with just this one thing saw a pretty obvious pattern in Orion's force usage and planned to change his practice style from now on. He didn't take out his wand, as he is still not habituated to doing that. All those practices with force, made him unconsciously use force over normal modern magic. Such potential, good thing I didn't let him buy a new wand, once he gets used to the wand then this potential will die down. No. I need to find a way to get rid of that wand of his, Merlin mutters under his breath so that Orion who is still with Rose doesn't hear him. Merlin realized why Orion had so much trouble with force still now, he didn't notice it because Orion was doing even better than him from the past as he learned what took him months in just days, according to him Orion just needed practice but that was not the case, he just realized that Orion learns learning speed was much faster and he finally found what was holding him back. Wandless, Merlin thought. Chapter 54 Chapter 54, Lost the Train 2 We are around 800 plus stones and if it hits 1000 before Sunday night then I'll have to upload 3 bonus chapters, and can we do that? 30. We lost the train, what do we do now, Rose asked with a little panic in her tone. After Orion helped her up, she tried to cross the wall one more time but had no luck, Orion on the other hand was counseling with Merlin, his knowledge about ancient magic and different forms of magic like elf magic was still lacking. Don't worry, let me try, Orion said and walked up to the wall slightly touching it, he felt that Dobby's magic was not affecting him and he could enter the wall, interesting was the only thing Orion could say before he started to chant a spell inside his head, something he just got from Merlin, an ancient magic which can remove any secondary magic which could affect the primary magic. Rose on the other hand saw Orion slightly touching the wall and muttering something under his breath, she was no Hermione and her knowledge of magic was bare bones at best but she still waited. Done, we can cross now, Orion said with a smile after completing his chant and to Rose's disbelief she was able to enter the wall. What? But I wasn't able to just now, Rose got even more confused. Good waifu material? Yes but not that bright of a witch, I have to say, Merlin on the side chime in. When the hell he learns what waifus are, what the hell is this old man watching in my head? Orion was getting real suspicious now. Dash. We entered the bloody wall but we still lost the train, what are you gonna do? Rose asked having no idea how they gonna reach to Hogwarts now. We can fly? Orion intervened and took out his custom built broom for himself. He promised himself that he would make a broom for himself which would be the best and that he did in his free time. Rose after seeing the broom, even forgot she lost the train and shifted her entire attention to Orion's fancy broom. The broom itself was fully black with a golden pattern of wings formed into them alongside one Pippisus logo a complete contrast to the white Pegasus broom which he planned to mass produce to sell. After seeing that Rose was completely captivated by his broom, he firmly smiled and said, Behold the best broom of the century, Black Pegasus, Orion said and then motioned Rose to take out her own wand, she had Nimbus 2000 which was supposed to be the fastest broom just a little while ago. Only recently its record was broken by Nimbus 2001. And Orion was sure that that record too would be broken as soon as his own line of brooms, Pegasus entered the market. I don't have my broom. I leave it in Hogwarts, Rose said and this made Orion confused at why Rose will do that, she loves her broom, so why leave it back in the castle? The reason was that there was a possibility that her relatives might have destroyed the broom and thus she didn't want to take any chances. Don't worry, you can share with me, Orion said and the motioned Rose to come over. 
but Rose was already blushing by the outcome, while Merlin on the side was questioning whether this girl really left her broom in Hogwarts or she just wanted to ride with Orion in his fancy broom. Blushing, Rose slowly came towards Orion and sat down on the broom, but the moment she sat, she felt comfortable. The feeling of wood pressing against her was not there. I for some reason know that I will get many comments on this line. Hold me tight, Orion advised and blushed a little when Rose's slender arms wrapped around himself and her growing breasts were pressed onto him. You are weak, Merlin on the side sends a disgusted look at him which makes him twitch his eyes. All right then, up up and away. Uh -uh. The speed of takeoff broke the sound barrier but the magic didn't let either Orion or Rose feel the pressure, the speed was there and almost made Rose breathless. She screamed at the top of her lungs. She might be a seeker but this speed was on a whole different level. Just in 30 seconds they crossed the city area and entered the green lands. For the first time, Rose was really afraid of riding a broom. Rose open up your eyes, Orion said, and if possible then lose your grip a little, I am almost suffocating here, that is what he wanted to say. Rose took a deep breath before opening her eyes, clenching Orion like a lifeline, when the takeoff happens, now she feels a little ashamed. She slowly opened her eyes and like a world almost changed around her, she saw the beauty of nature. They were flying pretty high and Orion reduced the speed so that they could enjoy Mother Nature. And Rose also had to agree. They saw trees, rivers, and grasslands below them while a completely blue sky was above them with pretty white clouds. Her eyes slightly widened and when the fresh cold air she inhaled, she visibly relaxed. Finally, also let poor Orion breathe again. Rose didn't know why but after observing the beautiful sight round her, she looked at the boy who she was holding on to and thought about what she saw in the mirror of Aries back then. She clenched her jaw a little and after losing her hold on Orion, she slightly got closer to Orion if that was even possible and firmly wrapped her hands around him but this time she was not tight like holding on to her dear life. It was more like a hugging manner, where her palms were open and while one palm was on their stomach, the other was directly on top of his beating heart, which she felt beating as she rested her head on top of his back, leaving practically no room left between the two. There was a look of relief on her face for some reason. Unknown to her, the reason she was able to feel Orion's heart was because it was in fact beaten faster than usual. God damn it calm down, you gonna explode like this, Orion told to his own heart. Don't think anything, she is still twelve, she is still twelve. I don't want to meet that magical counterpart of FBI any time soon, but the warm feeling he was feeling while Rose hugged so intimately made him blush. Seems like puberty will hit our hero ahead of its time. Merlin just signed. Chapter 55, Chapter 55, Lost the Train 3, Bonus Chapter. The first time put chapter on timer on update but this clearly doesn't work right, sign have to do this manually. Enough the bonus chapter anyway. 30. Both Orion and Rose arrive at Hogsmeade station in less than one hour. To slow down his beating heart, Orion increased the speed of his broom instead, turning the loving and intimate hug from Rose back to that desperate hold for survival and making him suffocate yet again. We didn't need to fly at that speed you know, Rose said with a huff, maybe out of breath or just pouting as she honestly was enjoying the scenery, yeah definitely the scenery. Yeah, but it was fun, right, Orion said while avoiding the topic altogether. He looked around and noticed the time on a clock on the station. It will take another five hours before Hogwarts Express arrives there. Thinking about it, he thought why not take Rose inside the Hogsmeade village? Hey, wanna explore the village before we get back to Hogwarts? It will take another five hours for the Hogwarts Express to come anyways, Orion asked Rose who too was a little embarrassed at what she did back then slightly nodded in confirmation. Merlin, why did I have to do something like that, ah uh, ah uh, uh, Rose berated inside her mind, no wonder he increased the speed like that, unknown to Orion, Rose did catch the blush on his face and although it made her feel a little relief only a little, and now it was hard to face him. Dash. Hogsmeade Village was your typical wizarding wizards with all its quirks but it was fun and Ryan had to admit. But only after asking Rose to come with him did he realize that it almost sounded like a date. God damn it, he cursed inside, the rumors of them roaming in Hogsmeade alone will be out there in no time, no matter my law wizarding, news travels fast when they are juicy topics like this, guess in that regard we wizards are not that different from the moles, Orion thought to himself. He didn't suspect that Rose would give too much weight to this considering that she is only twelve and in the movies or books, Harry hardly cared about love or feeling until he was in the fourth year. But unknown to him, Rose was almost dying out of embarrassment inside. There were currently three broomsticks and Ryan ordered something to eat. So. So. 
Both spoke almost at the same time and then stared at each other, a little smile creeping onto Orion's face while Rose immediately looked away. No matter how much inexperience with girls, Orion still had the mind of a 16-year-old and carried himself like that, well most of the time. It's strange how he still considers himself 16 when he also lived quite a long time in this world and should be 25 plus. That is because your mind stops growing and fixes its mental age at 16. It might start growing again after you cross the age of 16 in this world. I for once can't wait for that day to come. Then you might really grow up a little, mentally that is, Merlin explains with a touch of mockery in his tone, Orion has gotten so used to his antics that he doesn't react at all. You go first, Orion said while giving a confident smile, getting back to his clad persona no matter how forced it was. <laughs> that broom. You made it, Rose asked and Orion had much to talk about it. Yeah, my own creation, Orion said and explained how that black broom is called Black Pegasus which he created with Red's feather. The atmosphere was strange as two twelve-year-olds were all along in three broomsticks and chatting happily. And for some reason, the bartender was giving them a strange look. Seated by the window with mugs of steaming butter beer, Orion and Rose shared stories and laughter. The golden liquid warmed their insides, and the cozy atmosphere of the inn enveloped them like a magical embrace. As they sipped their drinks, the conversation shifted to their upcoming year at Hogwarts. Orion, ever eager to explore new magical knowledge, spoke animatedly about the classes he was looking forward to. Rose, with her bright eyes and infectious enthusiasm, added her own excitement to the mix. Waifu material indeed, Orion muttered slowly but Rose heard him. What's waifu? she asked. Ah, nothing nothing, just a beautiful girl is called waifu it's a Japanese term, Orion quickly said, earning a blush from Rose. Both of them were having a good time. By the logic of modern entertainment, shouldn't this be a time when all hell breaks loose? Merlin wondered. Almost felt like he jinked the situation when he heard a loud noise. Chapter 56, Chapter 56, What You Know About Vampires, Bonus Chapter Here is the bonus chapter I promise. You got one before this when I was testing out the auto-upload timer but it didn't work and chapter got uploaded earlier. Just my luck. 30. Before starting, I am not sure where three broomsticks let twelve years in. So if that is not the case then just consider a plot hole or simply a special mean Orion used to get inside, known as mind tinkering. Both Orion and Rose heard noise from outside. Orion caught the noise first of course considering how sensitive his hearing was. He was just in the middle of cracking another joke and drinking his butter bear which was questionable and tasted like a real bear, but he stopped just an inch before the cup touched his lips. Merlin, Orion sent a questionary glance towards Merlin but the old wizard just shook his head, not having any idea what was going on. Rose, stay here, I will be back soon, Orion said and slowly walked out from the three broomsticks. He was about to go for his wand but before that Merlin said. Don't use the wand. I will explain later but don't use it right now, Merlin said with no further explanation. Orion eyes twitch at this, this old man wouldn't let him use a wand when practicing but not even in this situation, well considering that they are still in Hogsmeade, it's relatively safe but still. Orion slowly moved forward, he wanted to cast a disillusionment charm but, he couldn't if he was not using his wand. He decided to just hide behind bushes and buildings and move towards where the noise was coming from. Dash. Wizards no doubt, level 3 at best and many are just level 2, Merlin pointed after seeing a bunch of wizards gathered in one place and waving their wands for some reason. Level 2 is like normal adult wizards while level 3 is powerful wizards like professors or veterans like Horas. Not just wizards, they are all Auras. But why would the Auras would be here? Orion mutters to himself and thinks, in the original books, nothing like this happened. At least he can't remember something like this happening. Get a little closer, from here it's impossible to get any info, Merlin said after watching Orion contemplating whether to let his curiosity win over or go back to Rose. Yeah while I'm here, I might as well just check out what's going on, Orion thought and after slowly moving closer to the place, he instantly then felt a magical ward there. Strange, this magical ward is not blocking anything from getting in but rather blocking things from getting outside. I wonder what? Orion wondered and entered the invisible wards after checking whether it was a sensory ward or not. The moment he got inside the wards, a familiar smell hit his sensitive nose. He was reminded of a being that he didn't want to see again, and Merlin who was able to see what going on in his head, naturally picked out what he was thinking. Vampire. Yeah. Why a vampire is here, what can a vampire be possibly doing here, inside a wizard's habitants, not to mention, near a school no less. 
Curiosity started to get the better of him but his last experience with a vampire didn't go so well and he didn't want to put himself in that situation again. No doubt that a vampire was here, and I have an uncanny feeling that this has something to do with that particular past experience which you are thinking of right now, Merlin interrupted Orion's thinking and said. What? Why do you think that Orion got out of his daze and looked straight at Merlin a little confused at how both the incidents are related? I will naturally tell you why, but right now we better get out of here. I checked and those wizards only found the victim of a vampire here, most likely that vampire feed here, he might still be lurking around, Merlin's advice brought back Orion's mind to Rose. She was alone in three broomsticks. Right, Orion said and got back to Rose. Making big strides towards the bar, but before that he heard Merlin talk. Your smell, make sure that before you leave you remove your smell from here, Merlin advised and Orion also realized why. He not even being a vampire had an amazing smelling ability after absorbing vampires. A real vampire is supposed to be even better. Knowing that Orion can't use many spells without a wand, Merlin didn't say anything when Orion had to use his wand. After that, he directly went for Rose. Orion, what's going on? Rose asked with a little tippy tone in her voice. Is that really not a beer? Orion questioned again and then went close to Rose. Chance of plans, we are not waiting for the Hogwarts Express anymore. We will directly go to Hogwarts now, come on he better get going, Orion and cast a refreshment charm on Rose to bring her back to focus. Dash. Minus one hour later. Both Orion and Rose came back to Hogwarts without any issues, took some time to explain why they were early and not in the Hogwarts Express considering just how fast they had arrived from King Cross to Hogsmeade thanks to Orion's broom. It was easy to make a McGonagall believe that they directly came to Hogwarts and didn't stop anywhere else, as it roughly takes as much time as it would take on any other broom. Of course, the consequences of flying in the Mull world were still there but Orion handled it. After that Rose went to her dorms early to change while Orion came to the room of requirement. All right, let's hear it then, why do you think that that vampire was there for me, Orion asked Merlin. I never said that they are there for you. I just merely suggested that it's connected with what happened to you earlier a year ago. But that being the case, I really do believe that you are the reason for them being here. Why? Orion asked trying to find any reason why that would be the case. Before I answer that question, let me ask you, what do you know about vampires? Merlin asked once again challenging Orion's knowledge about the magical world, but this time, Orion didn't have much about those damn creatures. One might suspect that after nearly getting killed by one, Orion will try to find info about the creature he absorbed, but nope. Not Orion, he was just too involved in getting stronger that he forsaken everything else last year. Besides the things I know from modern media, nothing, Orion said honestly. Well then a little history lesson is in order I presume. God Orion almost rolled his eyes. I promised to keep this one short, Merlin saw the visible groan escaping Orion's lips and replied. Vampires are different from any normal creature on this earth. They are the result of an experiment gone wrong, a mutation happened which gave birth to vampires. The person doing the experiment was no doubt a magical, maybe a witch or a wizard. We can't say. This took place thousands of years ago and we don't have much knowledge about their origins anymore, but what we do know, or at least what I do know is that they were intended to be this immortal creature which stands above everyone else. Vampirism was supposed to be a solution to death. A salvation, Merlin said and let things sink in. Let me guess, things didn't go as planned, Orion chimed in. Precisely, early vampires were granted this pseudo-immortality but that came with a cost, later when the old blood got diluted, even that pseudo-immortality was not there. We will not diverge into more of that but talk about the cost which I just talked about. Besides the clear lust for blood and occasionally going berserk and losing one mind, the major problem vampirism brought was the inability to use magic, Merlin said. I see, but what that has to do with, Orion stopped mid-sentence. After processing what Merlin said, he immediately asked. What you mean they can't use magic? Back then that vampire kicked the living daylight out of me with that cruzio of his. Not to mention, the killing curse. If I hadn't awakened my inner Skywalker back then, then I would have been toast. Orion argues back. Chapter 57 Chapter 57, what's his angle, bonus chapter. Oh I hope that you didn't thought that that was it, you guys have earned three bonus chapter, for the first time bringing my reach to a 1000 stones. Can't thanks you guys enough. 30. What you mean they can't use magic? Back then that vampire kicked the living daylight out of me with that cruzio of his. 
Not to mention, the killing curse. If I hadn't awakened my inner Skywalker back then, I would have been toast. Orion argues back. Yes, you would be toast if your internal integration technique hadn't kicked in back then, although heavily flawed I have to say that the technique has merits when you are against a wall. And yes, vampires can't use magic, even though they do possess magic, you would have known this if you had studied a little about them, Merlin sounded pretty calm throughout the conversation, once again refreshing the fact that the being standing in front of Orion was not your friendly neighborhood grandpa. Merlin Emrys is a name which is nothing less than a god in this world, even people like Dumbledore have to acknowledge that. Wizard says Dumbledore is the second coming of Merlin. Total bullcrap, if only the wizarding world knew the gap between them and the wizards of the past, then they would never have thought about it. Orion has seen the gap, and thus he understands that people like Merlin were really gods back then, not like there are many like Merlin. Come on, give me a break. I was busy getting stronger and finding a way to kick bullies butts back then, Orion whines not trying to hide that he should have found out about vampires back then but he didn't. Merlin on the side just sighed, almost like he had seen this multiple of times. Anyway coming back to the point, I am sure that now you are wondering how come you have the misfortune of suddenly facing a vampire who can use magic, right? Merlin almost read Orion's facial features and said before Orion could himself. Hell yeah, why do I have to take all the flying arrows all the time? Well, I honestly don't know why he was there but I can tell you that he was not completely a vampire, the hybrid if you say, the blood that he had was strong, stronger than any normal vampire has the right to have. In short, either you killed a very newborn vampire who was thirsty for blood back then and happened to be a wizard before that, which clearly explains why he could use magic and had a wand or he attacked you and the dog as a vampire won't touch other animals if they had human blood in front of them. He would have lost his magic entirely sooner or later thanks to vampirism anyway. Or, Merlin didn't complete the sentence. I have a feeling that I won't like what comes after this or Orion eyes twitch as a familiar feeling comes to him. The feeling which was telling him that he fucked up. Or that vampire has to be a descendant of a pulard vampire coven. Son of a bi. Dash. After wasting much time cursing, Orion finally went to his dorm, and after changing his clothes, he sprung for the sorting ceremony. He didn't have to but he promised that he would spend more time with his friends this year. Not to mention, also socialized with others. By the time he reached the main hall, he found the place was neatly decorated with many magical lights and flowers, while the entire place was radiating with magic. He didn't sense magic this well back then, he could this time because of his much developed magical circuits. The moment he entered the hall, three mental attacks slammed onto him like bullets, even he didn't have time to decipher where they came from, not like he had to as there were only three in the hall who could do that. Good thing my mental shields are hidden with all important memories. Merlin's method of mind arts is much better, Orion was internally relieved and slowly looked towards the three culprits. Dumbledore, Snape and one Nick Iron. Dumbledore is sitting in between many professors with an ever so pleasant smile on his face and twinkling eyes. The only problem here is that those twinkling eyes are on me like I am some kind of zoo animal, they are not leaving me even once. Snape was also pretty similar, glaring at me like he saw James Potter himself like, I am the president of Marauders. And lastly, Nick. Orion suddenly stopped and blinked. He didn't find Nick on the slither inside. Did he not come? But if so, then where does the third mental prompt come from? Orion question. HMPH, you might want to look there, Merlin said pointing towards the Gryffindor side. Orion naturally followed the direction Merlin pointed to and had to take a double take. Why he is sitting on the Gryffindor table, Orion almost said it out loud, no scratch that. Why that bastard is sitting with Hermione. He could feel the foul magic radiating from him from his distance, even when they were surrounded by this many wizards and witches, even powerful mages like Dumbledore or Snape. There is no way that Dumbledore wouldn't notice this right? Even I have noticed, Orion complains, why they are allowing him to be in Hogwarts even after sensing dark magic from him. Don't forget that everyone's sense doesn't work like yours, even before absorbing the Philosopher's Stone and developing your magic circuits, you had very impressive magical senses, which have only improved after the big upgrade. I doubt that even someone like Snape can feel the difference between normal magic and dark magic which Nick is surrounded with. But Dumbledore has noticed, why he is not doing anything, I am not sure, Merlin added and Orion found that he was standing at the entrance for too long and started finding himself a seat with his fellow Gryffindors. Rose kept a place for him, sweet girl that one. Orion quickly seat and looked around. Where were you, Rose asked with a small voice, trying not to interrupt the sorting. 
Nothing just a quick nap, Orion offhandedly answered while his attention was still on the talking Nick and the giggling Hermione beside him. Rose, what going on with Hermione? Why he is sitting beside that Slytherin boy? Orion asked as he also noticed that McGonagall started staring at him with a gleam in her eyes, he met her before and even then she looked a little different. It was almost the same gleam as Dumbledore had, not threatening but predatory all the same. Don't know, Ron said she was sitting with Nick in Hogwarts Express too, Rose said nonchalantly. I see. What do you think? What's his angle here? Merlin asked. Not sure, but I will find out. I ain't letting anyone take my waifu, Orion said with a firm tone. Oh come on, grow up a little. This is no game. He is dangerous, Merlin sounded serious and thus Orion too became serious for once. I know, shit why do I have to take all the flying arrows? Seems like I have to play detective this year to find this bastard's identity and motives, Orion muttered slowly. Fair enough, I too would like a game of Among Us. I bet he too is dying to find out about you, Merlin added with a little smirk, maybe excited by the prospect of playing detective. Oh, believe me, he ain't the only one, Orion muttered while sending another look at Dummels, Snape and even a little Ravenclaw girl who was staring at him after her sorting. Chapter 58, Chapter 58, Headmaster's Office Again The entire sorting ceremony was a boring affair, Orion was only slightly interested in one white-haired lily but that's it, nothing more. You kept looking over to the Ravenclaw side or at Hermione. What's going on in your head? Rose nodded her head on the side slightly and asked acting cute. Orion even thought knew that she was acting different now, like intentionally trying to act cute but he didn't give that thought much credit. Nothing, I am just a little worried about Hermione. You know she is friends with a Slytherin suddenly and it kinda bothers me. Both of us kinda had a bad past with that house. Orion looked over and noticed that both Hermione and Nick were still talking. Now he too wanted to know what in Merlin's name is so funny that let Hermione brush her hand on his chest. Is that jealousy I smell? Merlin narrowed his eyes and a smirk appeared on his old wrinkled face. No that's something shady what you are smelling, Orion replied. Smelling shady, Rose got confused and asked. Ah, no no I am just thinking something else, Orion realizing that he just said his thoughts aloud and quickly replied while stuffing food inside his mouth. Well it might look like that but both of them knew either other since the first year. They did spend quite some time together but others hardly noticed. Especially you, Mr. Grinder, Rose said and chuckled after using the name she once gave to him after he explains the concept of grinding to others. Orion on the side got silent, he was not expecting this. Nick and Hermione were friends, he didn't know this, hell he never even expected it. But he started to come up with all possible reasons why Nick could be interested in Hermione. After all unlike others he knew Nick's truth. There gotta be a reason why he is being chummy with Hermione right? Orion asked internally to Merlin. Don't think too much about it, you can only warn her but besides that, don't care too much. It's her choice, Merlin said not caring but his voice was firm and Orion also noticed it. Rose on the side sends another questionary glance at Orion, pouting now. Orion on the other side started to ponder over the matter, Nick Ion is a dangerous man. Orion, Rose wind bringing back him from his days, he looked at the pouting girl and sighed. Sorry sorry, just thinking about something useless. Tell me again what you were talking about. Dash. Mr. Ambrosius, headmaster would like to meet with you said McGonagall who was just done giving a quick briefing about the usual rules of the castle and how they are supposed to behave to the new lions. I knew something was going on here, Orion resisted himself from rolling his eyes right in front of McGonagall. He knew that that old bastard was up to something after getting that mental attack, not to mention that creepy twinkling in his eyes. Dude what did you do? Not even the twins have called to the headmaster's office on the first night of the school. We knew you were a lion, my friend. Orion heard many murmurings around him in irritation and shot a nasty glance towards his fellow lions. He just shook his head and then started to make his way towards the headmaster's office, but then noticed McGonagall following him. Guess she gonna join us, Merlin added from the side. Dash. Lemon drop, McGonagall said and the stairs started to move. Orion only came to this office once before leaving the school. He was only expecting to come here many many years later when Dumbledore would be dead and his all accumulated knowledge was his for taking. Orion, come in my boy, Dumbledore said and all the evil Dumbledore fanfics started to roam inside Orion's mind. Almost every time before screwing the MC, the bastard will say one thing. My boy. A chill went down his spine, further making him decide that entering this room was not a wise idea, but it was not like he had many choices. 
Entering the office, Orion looked around. Last time he was too alert because of Nick's presence and couldn't look around. He saw many magical books lying around and even some with dark magic. How come this old man has this dark artifact and no one will say too shit to him? Professor Dumbledore, you called for me, Orion said with a smile. Ah yes, I was waiting for you for a long time now Orion, Dumbledore said as he took out a very familiar book. This book was the same book Orion gave as a gift to many of his professors, Dumbledore included. A chaotic core, Dumbledore read the title of the totally white book with simple golden and black titles. He also saw a cute smiley face on the corner. The design was something which made even someone like a kid pick up the book to give it to dry, and honestly, that's what Orion was targeting here, children. Dumbledore didn't think the same though as he had a complicated face after reading the book. So he wanted to meet Ryan as soon as possible and wanted to know the real mind behind the book. Of course, the reason for the Legilimant attack from Snape and Dumbledore previously was the same, to find out who exactly wrote this book. Thanks to Merlin's mind technique, even the great Dumbledore can't find that Ryan has mental shields, it's a double-edged sword as his all but most important memories are unguarded. This costs him his piracy but gives him almost absolute secrecy about some memories which he wants to protect. Oh you like the book, I sent it to almost all the professors, I intended to ask about it later on, Orion smiled and said, he was pretty proud of his work, especially the new line of brooms. Chapter 59, Chapter 59, Pandora's Book A month ago. Everything started after Orion sent his new book A Chaotic Core as a gift to all his Hogwarts professors. That day, many of the professors were given a good scare after Red emerged out of nowhere with flames in front of everyone and threw the book at their faces. Did I say that Red is still pretty young? Dumbledore also falls victim to this as he is drinking lemon tea in his office on his off day and then suddenly a flame appears, lighting up the office, Dumbledore being too used to this, thanks to Fawkes, does not do anything and goes to take another sip of his beverage when a book was slammed right at his face, spilling all the tea on his very expensive and questionable dress. It was a good thing for him that Orion had put a letter inside each book to identify himself as the culprit of the situation although who else can use a phoenix as a courier bird besides the only two phoenix dammers in the country, but being the benevolent lord of light, he forfeited the plan to use his authority to take payback, like putting cockroaches in his food, yeah he is petty like that sometimes, and honestly, he has so many of those lying around for this exact purpose. He with a wave of his wand, removed the tea stains from his clothes and then looked at the letter itself. Dear Headmaster. Hope you are enjoying the vacation. I just completed my first book and am sending away a copy to each professor, hope you like the book and give me your opinions. Orion. The letter itself was not even in an envelope, it was just there, tugging inside the book. Dumbledore after reading the very short letter with surprisingly worse handwriting than the five-year-old, sighed and looked at the book itself. He didn't even know that Orion was writing a book. He himself has written many books but all of those were written when he was well past in his thirties. He looked at the pure white cover of the book which looked pretty elegant and had its titles written in golden, a chaotic core he read and got confused. What could a one first year student write anyway, he was about to put this book down but something about the name of the book just caught his attention, like begging him to read, at least the first page. So after pondering a little more, he ended up opening Pandora's book. And he wasn't the only one, almost all the professors who got their hands on Orion's book early before mass publishing didn't do anything more, correction, they couldn't do anything more and read the book. Dash. Headmaster's office, present. Oh you like the book, I sent it to almost all the professors, I intended to ask about it later on, Orion smiled and said, he was pretty proud of his work, especially the new line of brooms. Dumbledore at this sends a wandless legitimacy prompt towards Orion, Orion doesn't even flinch and lets the old man with complete disregard for privacy do his things. Ah, I read the book, it would be an understatement if I said that I was surprised by the viewpoints and knowledge you provide in this book, Dumbledore replied only after making 100% sure that Orion was the one who wrote this book. Oh you like it, Orion's small smile widened and his excitement grew. Yes, everything you explain in this book is very enlightening, may I ask how you came to learn all this knowledge, Dumbledore asked with a smile. On the side, McGonagall looked even more excited than Orion, she read the book and all the things Orion talked about in the book completely changed how she used to see magic. Added some digging, mainly because I wanted to cure my own problem with having weak magic. While most of the things I talk about in the book are just my hypothesis many of those things actually worked for me, Orion said and took out his wand slowly. 
He didn't want to talk too much about the process of creating this book, if possible. Both McGonagall and Dumbledore frown a little seeing Orion suddenly taking out his wand but didn't act. They are professors, if they felt threatened by just a second year student then they don't deserve to be in Hogwarts. Orion didn't care and with a triumphant smile said, Lumos. And with that, a bright light came to life, to others it was a very basic spell but to Orion, it was his hard work and success, telling others that he is no longer inferior to anyone. Dumbledore and McGonagall didn't understand what Orion was trying to say with this first level spell. Orion seeing that they didn't understand stopped the light and looked around. After finding a quill lying on the table, he smiled and turned his wand towards it while waving and slowly spoke the right spell, which he didn't need as long as he had the wand he could cast the magic without wand movement or spell, his improved magic circuits and control help him in that, but he did it nonetheless to show both Dumbledore and McGonagall. Instantly the quill turns into a golden snitch and flies all around the office. Surprising both Dumbledore and McGonagall. Both Dumbledore and McGonagall are masters in transfiguration and know the significance of what just Orion did, no normal first year student can do that, even a six year student will have trouble doing this. Merlin, McGonagall exclaims on the side, stunned and shocked, there are two reasons to it. One, Orion was barely able to turn a matchstick into a needle just a few months ago. Second, Orion just used a complex spell. A complex spell at your age is a very impressive feat. My boy, Dumbledore said from the side and observed the flying snitch, looking for any defects but there were none. Dumbledore wasn't surprised by the power Orion showed. It was similar to any other first or second year student but the spell itself that was special. The magic which Orion did can be done by a first year student, at least power wise but normally they need control over the magic to perform it. This explains that Orion's control over his magic is firm. A complex magic is adding more attributes to a spell, like flying and transformation, Merlin said from the side, making it easier for the reader to understand. I usually have fun breaking the fourth wall but I will not if readers don't like it, please tell me in the comments. How? McGonagall asked utterly confused and shocked. Orion and Merlin knew why and smiled, Merlin because how something so simple was amazing for the modern wizards and Orion because his hard work and grind paid off. Dumbledore too wanted to know, McGonagall's reaction told him that it was not just the impressive spell and control of Orion's magic which made her like this. Chapter 60, Chapter 60, Pandora's Book 2 Orion after showing his newly found skill in magic and much-awaited magical power to both Dumbledore and McGonagall with a smug smile. So when McGonagall asked how he did it, he was too happy to explain the edited version which both he and Merlin devised before. In the book, I have talked about the nature of magic. Every book about magic I read in Hogwarts library before was praising magic as a gift or a power which we magical people got from the creator, but I never found out the real reason why we have magic while miles don't. This led to me creating my own hypothesis, I reversed the entire concept and it started making sense to me, I believe that magic is not a boon given to us but a natural disorder in the laws of the cosmos which occurs by the inclusion of chaos in the world, Orion said and both Dumbledore and McGonagall frowned. They had read the same lines in the book too and they didn't like it as their upbringing in the magical world had made them see magic as this almighty power that they should show gratitude to have. I know many will not believe my hypothesis, after all, magic is similar to religion in the magical world, and I don't want anyone to agree with my viewpoints either, all I want is to read that book with my mindset to understand what I am trying to convey, Orion seeing the frowning faces decided to do some damage control before going forward, and all these things he said was also written in the book. He wrote right on the cover to read the very first page of the book and if buyers can read the book from his point of view which he mentioned before, only then they should purchase the book. Many would not buy the book or agree with his belief but Dumbledore and McGonagall read the book nonetheless, they wanted to know what led Orion to consider magic as a virus or disorder. And they were glad that they did, because all the reasons that Orion gave, made complete sense, for the first time in their life, they had a complete understanding of the origins of magic, or at least a theory that checks all the boxes. Like a math formula, it works no matter how big or small a number is, so yeah in a way it checks all the boxes, all except one, the public satisfaction. Most of the time, authors write what pleases their audience, usually going against the public with subjects which arouse public criticism and even make them angry are avoided by the authors. But Orion didn't care much, he was not here to please the idiotic peasants of the magical world who are nothing better than sheep. He was here to educate the new generation of wizards, to bring back the ancient magic and reveal the ancient knowledge back again. 
I have to be honest Mr. Ambrosius, what you did is dangerous, it will arouse much public criticism towards you, especially from the more religious side of the magical world. Fortunately for you, magical Britain is not influenced by those magical religious sects, McGonagall said with a stern tone but then immediately said again. But personally I vouch for your work, the theory of magic being chaos and how it brings alternation in the realistic world is the most complete and loop-free theory of magic I have ever seen, McGonagall said with a proud smile like showing to others that Orion is from Gryffindor but then immediately snapped back at Orion, wanting to ask him again the question which was haunting her and even Dumbledore. But even before she opens her mouth, Dumbledore being more eager to ask. It is really possible to increase the power of a wizard or which is magical core with the method you wrote there, Dumbledore asked with much anticipation, he was not asking for himself, as he could barely notice any improvement on his own vast magical reserve, he asks for the new generation. Orion wrote down a magic cultivation technique given to him by Merlin in the book, he never used it as he has his own integration technique which is far superior to any other technique he can get his hands on and literally tailor made for him, even Merlin said that integration a cheat, and should not exist in the normal sense. The technique which Orion got from Merlin was named chaos binding or core binding, it's a magical core exercise which everyone can do. The effect takes time to build up like any other exercise but it shows that De Orion really believes in the phase that magic is like a muscle. Performing magic or training to do magic is like working on a field, eventually, you build the required amount of muscle but won't build more and will more or less focus on the technique over the build but in a gym, we especially target on building those muscles. The concept of this technique chaos binding is the same, its focus is on muscle building and buffing up. Orion smiled and gave a glance at the golden snitch which was still flying around the office, it depends on how dedicated you are but yes, the proof is right in front of you, Orion said and extended his hand and caught the snitch effortlessly like a chat, once again surprising Dumbledore and McGonagall but this time with his physical power and agility. Both Dumbledore and McGonagall knew about Orion's problem with weak magic, Madame Promfrey even tested this and made sure that it was a magic deficiency and not Orion acting or any external reasons like a curse or a disease. So Dumbledore after sensing Orion's sudden increase in magic and his absolutely pure magic, like more than any person has the right to thanks to him absorbing the unicorn, has to agree that Orion's method worked and he didn't use any black back to get strong like a certain Slytherin student which caught his attention, a little frown appears on his face after thinking about one Nick Allen and his sudden surge of magical power which reeks of black magic. And you are willing to give this knowledge to the wizarding world just like that? Dumbledore asked, like testing out Orion's motives. He himself has tested the technique and could say that it works, being the strongest wizard of his time has its perks, he knows how it feels like to get stronger, the technique feels like putting one body into a duel or fight for him, and mental fatigue, weakness and even circuits getting sore but ultimately that made wizards strong and this technique worked very similar. Who said it's free, you are paying for the book. Not to mention, once people find it's working for them, they will look for more of my work bringing more customers for me. It's business, Orion said while rubbing his hands, again showing his greedy ass to others, even Merlin sighed. I had to do something about this greed of his, Merlin covered his face like he didn't know the greedy kid in front of him, not even regarding that no one could see in him in the first place. On the side, both Dumbledore and McGonagall sweat drop, first time noticing that their little harmless genius has a greedy side. But still smile as they knew that the information Orion provided, worth far more than a book. They just internally think that it's his way of being modest or not taking credit. Dash. It took more than two hours to just clear out all the doubts and answer all the questions both Dumbledore and McGonagall had about his book and theory. The major ones are his claims that his technique can make magicals stronger, according to him it's possible to reconstruct a magical core for a squib, something he came up with by re-engineering his own case with the help of Merlin how wands don't let the magical circuits of a wizard develop and finally and the most outrageous thing he wrote in his book, the loss of magic density in the modern wizards makes more squibs and makes modern wizards weak. He literally trashes the traditional belief of blood purity of the pure blood wizards and explains his own version of pure blood, aka the magic density in the blood. Chapter 61, Chapter 61, Pandora's Book 3 Orion didn't expect that the two oldies would have so many questions about his book, it was well past the normal quarantine time and they were still going. Demanding to do more magic and checking his magic for themselves, especially Dumbledore. When Dumbledore first saw Orion entering Hogwarts today, he slightly felt an aura of pureness, something completely opposite of Nick Iron. 
Nick had this dark feeling about him. It was hard to pinpoint but Dumbledore was someone who indulged in both light and dark arts and knew the peculiarities of both. It's not hard for him to say that Nick is practicing dark magic. Dark magic is powerful but it also brings corruption to a mage. Nick was showing the same kind of corruption. A sudden increase in power and increased confidence are the symptoms which any wizards when first practicing dark magic will show. Dumbledore can't say for sure but he hasn't seen Nick using any magic but his suspicion led him to have Snape look after the kid. Orion is a complete opposite case in comparison to Nick, he too has gotten stronger but this power is just similar to any normal first or second year Hogwarts student. This much power is at least expected for any wizard to have in this age, so nothing impressive powerful vice but when someone sees his history and his previous problem with magic deficiency, Dumbledore has to give the credit where it is due. Orion has gotten stronger and with this comes the most dreaded question, sudden power often comes from the dark side. So is Orion D. Ambrosius too turning dark, or is he too getting corrupted? Absolutely not. Dumbledore didn't show any outward reaction but internally he was stunned to the point that he couldn't even say anything. Dumbledore didn't find any trace of dark magic on Orion before so he was skeptical about him turning dark but what he saw later completely left him baffled. Orion took out his wand and with a normal humor's charm light up the room. It was nothing special but only for those who didn't understand the law of magic and their nature. But Dumbledore does and he immediately senses the nature of Orion's magic. Pure. No the purest kind of magic Dumbledore has ever seen performed by any wizard. If he didn't know better then he would have even considered Orion a unicorn. It's a big deal as just how easy it is to corrupt one's magic with dark arts. It is equally hard if not more hard to purify one's magic. He himself took decades to reach where he is today and he lacks in compared to Orion. Dumbledore couldn't believe what he just saw, but he didn't say anything. He acted normal and later also saw the boy performing a complex magic, further impressing him. After confirming that Orion's magic really was that pure, Dumbledore was eager to find a reason why his magic was so clean and pure. And his gaze ultimately fell on the book he was holding. A chaotic core. He went into a trance and started remembering all the lines of the book, using his mind palace to search them and trying to find meaning behind those words, some he could and some he couldn't and thus he became a little greedy and kept on asking Orion question about the book. Dash. Even after two hours, he couldn't find a reason for Orion's pure magic, even after raiding his mind multiple times and asking all the questions about the book. He gave up, but the time he asked questions gave him a good perspective of what Orion was thinking when writing this book and he fell into contemplation. He finally started to see what Orion's vision was with his book, the knowledge he gave in his book was nothing but a new viewpoint to see magic. He actually trying to improve the state of the magical world with this. He was not holding back knowledge and giving it to others so the entire wizarding world could develop. Not as greedy as you want us to show eh? Dumbledore mused. This is incomplete knowledge isn't it? Dumbledore asked with a straight face. Both Orion and McGonagall were talking about transfiguration and Orion's point of view about it with much excitement. Even Orion was showing interest as he got almost all the knowledge from Merlin which is an ancient style of magic. So having a modern witch and a master in transfiguration at that was a delight to compare his viewpoint with hers. Beg your pardon, Orion heard him just right but still asked to understand what this mind Ryst was thinking about. This is incomplete knowledge, you haven't completed this book. To what I can only assume that you are holding back and might bring out in another book, Dumbledore asked with confidence. Smart man, Merlin was impressed considering Dumbledore joined the pieces and came to a conclusion of what both he and Ryan were thinking. And a dangerous man, Orion internally replied to Merlin, also understanding how frightening of a mind this Lord of Light possesses. Yes, I plan to write other books, Orion gave a simple answer, not planning to say or ask much. I see, Dumbledore said and a contemplation appeared on his old face, McGonagall also getting an understanding of where Albus was thinking started pondering and then looked at the book on the desk. What is the cost of this book? Dumbledore finally asked to which Orion was a little stunned. Why suddenly did he ask for the cost? Did he want the right of his book? Hell no I am not giving it even if you give me your phoenix. Orion internally thought and his determination to protect his newly found author career rose through the roof. It's ten sickles, Orion said with a little hesitancy as currently he was selling the book for only four sickles as an opening discount for one month and originally they planned to launch the book for six sickles. He said ten because he just wanted to express that he is making much money from the book and has no need to sell the right of the book. 
That's pretty high for a book but I guess you do have the right after the masterpiece you have created, Dumbledore said with an amused smile on his face, clearly he noticed Orion's thinking about the prize telling him that it's not final yet. How about seven sickles, if you are willing to sell this book at that price then, Dumbledore said but before McGonagall said. No Albus, even seven sickles are very expensive. She spoke and after contemplating a little hesitant said five sickles. Bitch. It took me an entire year to write this book, you want to purchase the book right from me by just that. Orion almost coughs blood. If you are thinking that they are planning to purchase the book rights by just five sickles then no. What I mean here is that the book they are willing to pay this much money as they sell in their own name. And when it comes to completely selling the rights of the books, yeah like they are crazy enough to think that Orion will do that after knowing his greedy nature. But I am not planning to, Orion was about to say something but Dumbledore replied first. I understand Minerva but this is not just a book, this here can change the wizarding world more than any of us realized, Orion my boy you might have not realized it yet but you have done the wizarding world a great favor, Dumbledore said and Orion just internally cursed. Yeah no matter how much you butter me up, I ain't selling it to you, you old cunning bastard, sent a nasty smile like with having trouble keeping his calm, dreading his decision to come here in the first place. How about this, Hogwarts will pay one galleon for every three books to you. Hogwarts have 600 students so that would be 200 galleons, what you say? My boy, Dumbledore said and waited for Orion's response while even McGonagall looked excited and anticipated Orion's response. Orion on the other hand was confused. He blinked as if trying to understand what was going on here. Weren't they were planning to purchase the book rights from me? How come this conversation changed like this? Idiot. They are not talking about selling them the book rights. They want to introduce your book to the Hogwarts students and want a discount so they can purchase in bulk. Merlin on the side was getting entertained by Orion's antics and finally spoke. Orion eyes wide and listening to Merlin, his confusion finally dissipating and a gulp unconsciously happened without him doing anything. Nanny. Chapter 62, Chapter 62, Learn to Dance? Orion after getting out of Dumbledore's office immediately sprinted towards his dorm. He had to tell Marcus who is currently in charge of handling all the book publications and even selling with a 50% cut, damn that businessman, that Hogwarts has orders 600 copies of A Chaotic Core. So he took out a pen and paper, and yes pen as he refused to use those quills anymore, they suck, and started writing a letter to Marcus the owner of Flourish and Blots. Professors don't let them use pens in classes, tradition and all that shit but still, this quill problem was also in his mind, if he can solve it then there will be another income source for him. For a modern person the traditional wizarding world or dare I say ancient world is a nightmare, but it's pure gold for a businessman. After all, business is about giving solutions to the problems people have in exchange for money, and believe it magic or not, this place has tons of problems. Now Ryan is the first one to think about it. Heck no there are countless numbers of mull wizards who try to do the same but there are three things which stop them. Firstly making modern things work with magic is hard and not everyone can do it and let be honest here the wizarding crowd will not even look at an object if it doesn't have at least a spell working on it. No matter how pointless it is like magic books which automatically turn the pages as we completed a page. Secondly, many good ideas never even reach the public as those damn pure blood use their power to ruin anything related to non pure blood. The entire political structure is designed to exploit mull wizards and favor pure lads. Lastly, the market itself, wizarding folks don't like mull stuff much, no matter how convenient they are, and a large part of it has to do with their upbringing and influence from what their government says. I mean mull's planning to steal their magic, really. No kidding, they use this kind of sentence to rally up the wizarding crowd back then and even to this date, the mindset is there. Orion just sighed after thinking about all the walls he needed to break down in his path of entrepreneurship. After completing the letter he had to bribe Red to deliver the letter in the middle of the night. The grumbling bird finally decided to do the beating of his money-obsessed friends under the temptation of Orion's homemade sweets, and yes I said it again Red likes sweets. Dash. Early next morning Orion woke up at his usual time of 4am and went for his daily exercise and magic training. Great, finally back to some intense workout. Let's start with something light, Orion said after filling his lungs with fresh morning air. What you're gonna do, Merlin asked not interested in the physical exercise. In fact in this regard Merlin was very similar to any traditional wizard. He never saw the reason to exercise when simple rituals can make a wizard's body stronger, not like they ever gonna use those fantastic muscles they build in their life beside the bed. 
Well maybe somewhere, a lazy wizard's created a spell to move his hip with magic too but Ryan wasn't having that. 100 push, 100 sit, 100 squats and 5 kilometer run. Wanted to run more but don't have that much time and honestly I can't risk going bald, Orion replied and started his training, Merlin on the other was not surprised, he had access to Orion's memories and knew that Orion was used to this. It was only last year when he was laser focused on increasing his magic that he stopped working out otherwise he built pretty good muscles in that little body of his when he was in the forest practicing integration even without any magic core. It took 45 minutes for Orion to complete his physical training and then after 5 minutes of rest, he was ready to start with the magical training. Finally, he ended up spending 20 minutes on integration as a daily meditation ritual, it's still hard as hell but after this much time, it makes him focus. Not to mention it increases his magical reserve ever so slightly each day so it's a win-win situation for him. Alright finally done, now tell me what I am training in today. Orion asked Merlin with a bright smile on his face, this kind of smile was often seen on a man's face who knows how it feels after a good workout, grind yourself until you shine, was his policy and after all Bruce Lee once said the successful warrior is the average man, with laser-like focus. Usually, by this time, the Hogwarts staff starts to wake up and do their morning rituals. But there are some people who wake up early and one person among them is Dumbledore. He today came out just to see what Orion was doing, he was so interested in that child's pew magic that he couldn't sleep well, just thinking about that magical radiance which Orion gave off. Knowing that Orion wakes up early and exercises, he comes out to see what he is doing, in the hope of finding a clue of what he is missing, but he just finds him doing normal mal exercise. Orion usually doesn't wear a shirt while working out, going full Bruce Lee but he might have reconsidered it if only he knew that Dumbledore was stalking him, actually. Anyone else would have been fine but Dumbledore's preferences were well. Force, I saw you unconsciously use force perfectly back in the King Cross station yesterday when you helped out that rose. I have started to see a pattern of why you are having a blockage in your training. Yeah that was crazy I also only realized what I did when you pointed it out. So what did you figure out? Orion asked curiously. To others though, he was only standing in one place with his eyes closed, looking like a stone statue. Correction, stone statue of a Greek god. Damn those muscles, our boy is Chad. Both Dumbledore and Snape narrowed their eyes to understand what he was doing. Snape joined in later as he too read the book and was interested in Orion, for purely academic purposes, and earlier he also saw Orion soloing Quirrell Mort with a single punch. No wonder the boy was able to knock out Quirrell, Snape saw Orion's Greek god persona and cursed inside his head, he didn't care about muscles but envy is a sin hard to avoid. My hero academia, remember that anime, Merlin asked. Of course, you even know the name because of my memories and now I have a pretty organized mind palace so yeah, I remember pretty much everything, Orion responds as if he was offended. Good then remember what kind of problem Dickie had when controlling his powers at the start, you are facing something similar. You mean when he was not able to control his powers because he was considering his power as an on and off switch, that Orion asked in confusion. Yes, the thing is you have to consciously think about using force and that is stopping you, this has to be done unconsciously, like walking and breathing, when you want to walk, your body unconsciously establishes balance with synergy with your legs and even your eyes adapt to that to give you a stable vision. HMM okay, so what do I really have to do, Orion asked again in confusion. Simple, you have to learn how to dance. Dance? Chapter 63, Chapter 63, Bad Feeling About This Year the dance which Merlin was talking about was not exactly a dance but more like a martial art, something similar to what Po learned in the second movie of Kung Fu Panda, learning how to balance his internal power and make it work together with the outside forces. For the next 30 minutes, to Orion's shame, he had to act like a total idiot and wave his hands in the air while moving the way Merlin told him. It's not like Merlin too was a dance teacher, he never danced his in life, whether it is the official lifespan of 400 years which others know of what is real lifespan and a thousand years. He was just correcting Orion whenever he saw Orion slipping out of force manipulation. What Orion was tasked to do here was simple, he was tasked to move around his force as he moved, matching his flow while not actually targeting something specific, meaning the force itself is not latching to anything but is present there and as long as something come near him, it will enter in his force field. So while Orion was acting like an idiot both Snape and Dumbledore tried to understand what the half-naked child in front of them was trying to accomplish. They didn't notice Orion's forces it was now not strong enough. 
both of them soon lost interest and with a sigh went back. Dash. Orion after his training and embarrassing performance decided to do this in the room of requirement but Merlin immediately shot down this idea, saying the idea here is to work together with nature, you can't run away from it, do it in the open. Grumbling to himself he then went to breakfast. Upon entering he saw Hermione not talking with Nick and finally sighed in relief, he intended to ask Hermione about Nick later. Orion, why are you standing here by yourself, come sit, Rose said with a bright smile, apparently happy. Orion then acted normal and sat down beside her, eating he was thinking about how to bring up the topic of Nick but before he could find the right way to start the conversation he heard the headmaster's voice. Students, I have something to say, Dumbledore as he saw everyone finally settling down. The noise in the hall immediately quieted down and everyone looked at him like he was Santa who was just about to give out gifts and show magic tricks. It's about this book which one of our students here sent me, he said and suddenly a white covered book appeared in his hand. The confused students looked at each other, while the professors on the other hand were all focused on a certain black hair and blue eyed second year student. I have read many books in my time but this book completely changed my prospect of magic. And it's not just me but all the professors who got to read the book and all of them have the same thing to say, Dumbledore said and looked at the students who looked back at him asking, so what are we supposed to do, you like a book, big deal, let us eat already. He didn't give two shits about the students he had dealt with in this kind of situation in his entire life, he shamelessly looked at the professors and all of them nodded and smiled. It was genuine too, considering that they really liked the book. There are a lot of things which they didn't like about the book, but when it comes to the book as a whole, they cannot help but agree just how much this book is gonna influence the future of the magical world. Why because all the knowledge Orion and Merlin gave in the book was correct, and if any of the professors even bother to try it out of there, they will know. Considering their faces, all of them have used the basic knowledge in the book in some way or other, and have experienced the credibility of the book firsthand. This book was a gift from a student to us professors, and after reading it, I personally believe that all the students should read this, all the professors agree with my suggestion and thus Hogwarts have purchased this book in mass for each one of you students, Dumbledore continued and Orion on the side was started to feel like this was getting out of hand. He knew that the book was priceless in some sense as this knowledge is not available in the wizarding world or if it does, it's with those Bullard families which will never let this secret let out, although only talking about the base of magic but every learned witch and wizards can say that if the base is not strong then no magical can reach their greatest height. But this, Orion feels like Dumbledore was making this a bigger deal than it should have been. And to my surprise, the books arrived this morning, Dumbledore said and even Orion was stunned at this. That Marcus guy's sure work fast, wonder how he did it, even Merlin sounded amazed. Great more books, Ron murmured under his breath while getting a scandalous look from Hermione who looked like if no one stopped her then she might snatch the copy Dumbledore was holding for herself. Orion just stood there, for the inevitable to happen. This book will be in your course from now on so I advise you to not just let it rod on your bookshelves unless you suddenly want to find out that the final exam questions are not in the syllabus anymore, Dumbledore said the last line with a little sadistic smile, Orion could have sworn he saw darkness there. And then the whines and puffing from the students finally started. And one more thing, let me announce the author of this book, Dumbledore said and even Merlin suddenly started seeing shadow rising behind him while horns came out of his head. There was a knowing smile on his face where he suddenly looked at Orion just before opening his mouth. Orion could already hear students complaining and cursing the author for adding more miserly to their student life. I am sure that it was not a dead threat, he said to himself. This book is written by none other than a student of Hogwarts, Orion D. Ambrosius, Dumbledore said with an innocent smile after throwing me into the pit of hell, making me a public enemy number one in seconds, while other professors started clapping. What? Hermione had snapped at me at a velocity which defied physics, while my surroundings went silent. I have a bad feeling about this year. Well played old man, well played, Merlin just laugh at my misery. Chapter 64, Chapter 64, This is Pure Gold, Bonus Chapter. F. Fuke Orion stuttered. Go on, read it, McGonagall looked at Orion like a lioness ready to hunt her prey, Orion was cursing inside his mind. Ha ha ha, this is pure gold, ha ha ha, Merlin on the other hand was not even trying to act like he was not finding this situation funny. Not only did he become the common enemy of the students after Dumbledore mercilessly exposed his identity as the author, but even McGonagall didn't leave him alone. 
he thought that he can hide his face and get by the class but no, bitch has to call him up and give him his own book to read in front of everyone. And no that alone would have been merciful, she only wanted him to read specific sentences from the book, in front of the entire class. We are waiting Mr. Ambrosius, McGonagall said with a stern tone and Ryan gave a nasty glare at both her and Merlin who was laughing his ass off. Slow down old man you will cough out your kidney like this. Fuck it, Orion said finally. There was an exclamation in the room, as every student looked at him like he had grown another head. Is finally a student going against the cruel rules of the professors? Do the students of Hogwarts finally have a leader of light of their own who will stand up against the dark forces of the school to save them? Unfortunately no, because Orion didn't say that because he had enough of this shit, he was reading his own book. Don't bitch about what I believe in okay, I don't give two fuck about what you assholes believe in, this is my book and I will write whatever I want. What you wanna do huh, Sumi Orion said with much difficulty still reading the book. Everyone had a scandalous look on their faces, like they saw Dumbledore and Grindelwald fucking each other. Oh no, don't think that, now that in my head, Merlin almost looked disgusted, serve him well. Keep on reading Mr. Ambrosius, McGonagall said. This heartless woman, I am gonna write a bad review about her in my next work, Orion wanted to complain but didn't and continued reading his own book with the wonderful language he used, whilst also hiding his face from the somewhat pale, laughing and barely able to understand what's going on students. Rose and Hermione were the most stunned among all the people out there, they knew that Orion had a bad habit of using colourful language but in a book, and the professor approves this. Actually, the professor wouldn't have but the knowledge in the book was so enticing that they had to. And don't even think about getting a refund, no matter how many times you bitch about it, I ain't giving back the money, there was a fair warning right at the cover of the book you son of bitches. You bought it anyways so now don't start working your ass in my direction, and if you have a problem, then don't tell me just write in a piece of paper and shove that in your ass Orion was barely holding the book now, completely covering his face and his shattering dignity. But unknown to teachers, those same students who felt disgusted about reading one more book thanks to a certain classmate of them, started to like the book. If not anything then just to read the rainbow vomit Orion did in it. So many even decided to read the book as soon as they get their copy. And don't even bother complaining about this book to whatever higher up you have in your contact list, I don't give two fuck whether you fart in their faces or give them a blowjob, I ain't returning your money in that final, Orion said while cursing why he didn't write like a normal person and have to put every known profanity known by the humankind in this book. Hell, he even made some original ones just because he was getting bored writing the one he already had. Dash. I can't believe it. How can you do that Orion Hermione shouted while other students who too had a potion class stopped and watched the show, something which would have never happened considering whose class they were avoiding. Does this idiot girl have to make a scene right here, and that bitch McGonagall, I'm gonna get her back for this, it is my eternal pledge, Orion muttered under his breath. Now I am confused whether you are angry about not telling you about the book or what I wrote in the book, he asked with much confusion. Hermione gave him a are you serious look and then kept on walking for the potions class. I am gonna kill Marcus later, Orion muttered under his breath. Actually, he never wanted to publish this version of the book, this was the unedited version which he gave Marcus to fix and make it more, well more kid friendly. I am gonna shove this book right up in his ass later on, Orion mutters and went to potions class with whatever shattered dignity he had left. He at least should have checked the book which he was sending to the professors beforehand. Dash. Ambrosius, Snape snapped right at him with a glare which would have frozen a basilisk. Why dot dot ye, yes Orion answered already accepting his fate. Enlight us, what you were consuming when writing this book. Orion had the urge to say Lily Potter right at the arsehole's face but he somehow suppressed it. It was more dangerous than calling Voldemort bald. He already has lost much and wasn't planning to lose his life too. Nothing professor, Orion said. He also looked around seeing everyone laugh their ass off even Nick Iron was snickering. I swear to all that is holy, Orion was about to say something but Snape spoke first. Really it didn't seem like you did. Reading this book, I have to say it was a profound experience. I found my knowledge of the English language was incomplete until I read it. I found myself short in this regard. If only we had this book earlier then we all would have reached higher heights. Oh you of it short there is no doubt about it but it ain't vocabulary. After getting love bites from Nagini go and ask your beloved Lily, you will know exactly what is short and why she chose Potter. Orion's curses were endless but he kept his mouth shut. 
Man this is pure gold, ha 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 ha. Chapter 65, Chapter 65, Daphne and Potion Class 1, Bonus Chapter. Sorry guys only a little less than 1000 stones. No 3 bonus chapters this week but don't worry we will make it next week. 30. You should spend all that time which you waste on doing that mal exercise and swelling your body on learning some manners and how to write a book like a normal person, Snape said, finally ending his long lecture. Hey, you can say whatever you want to me but not my grind. You have gone too far pal. Now you two are on my shit list with that bitch Minerva, Orion internally wrote Snape's name to his shit list. I swear I smelled a burn there, surely someone was jealous. There was no doubt, Merlin thought about it and looked at Snape with narrow eyes. That last comment sounds much more personal, haha. <laughs> Orion just shook his head slightly and started to look for a seat, Snape didn't even let him find a seat, usually, he sat with either Rose or Hermione but Ron ended up sitting with her while Hermione was sitting with him. Nick freaking iron. Orion saw and his eyebrows almost twitched, he. Just what the hell is going on with them, I really want to find out, Orion muttered to himself. He actually could find out with just eye contact but he had decided not to use a mind attack on people randomly, after all, he is someone who respects others' privacy. But considering what kind of danger Hermione could be in, he planned to use Legia Lamency on her. He looked around and found an empty seat beside a blonde Slytherin girl. One minute, a blonde Slytherin girl in the same age as mine, he thought to himself and looked at the girl. Hello I am Daphne Greenglass, Mr. Author, she said with a smile on her face while her eyes looked right at me. Ah, H yes, I am Orion D. Ambrosius. Nice to meet you, Orion didn't have time to think much and introduce himself. We have been classmates for a year you know, don't you think it's already a little late to introduce yourself, the beautiful girl said with a gleam in her eyes. Well can't argue with that, sorry I didn't introduce myself before, Orion smiled and replied. He saw the features of the girl and did to say that all those fanfiction wasn't wrong, she was pretty. And this is only twelve, it will become better. Anyways Mr. Author, was the way you wrote that book intentional? Daphne asked with a curious gaze. No. Hell no. I know what to write but never have been an author so just put whatever came in my mind last year in whatever free time I could get, I was just a bit, Orion said and didn't continue the last line. Bitching around to let it out. Daphne came a little closer and said with a small voice, almost stealing his inner thoughts. This girl is sharp, definitely not like those two. You better be vigilant when with her, Merlin said but Orion saw that he was curious. Um yeah. Letting out Orion nodded slightly and turned around to look at Snape, doing the same as Daphne did it before. You are not from any pure line, so are you Mulborn or Half-Blood she asked while still listening to Snape. Orion didn't notice any discrimination from her so he just replied, I don't know honestly, been an orphan as long as I know. Daphne just him as a response and ended the conversation there. Dash. Today's assignment was to make a clearing potion, a simple potion which clears out any lingering effect of magic from someone. Usually in the potion class, whoever is sitting with you is your partner for the day, and thus he had to work with Daphne. I hope that you know something about the potion, she asked the question. I know my potions, what about you though, being from Pulard and from the Greengrass family no less, you should have much knowledge about potions right, Orion asked while setting up the table to prepare the potion. You for a person who hardly talks with others, know awfully lot about the purer bloods, Daphne too didn't answer and asked a question of her own. Yeah now this is a person who has groomed well, not willing to give any info about her, calculative and observing, Orion from now on try to talk more to her and observe how she is acting, although there is a lot of bullshit going on among almost all the purer bloods but if there is one thing which you should learn from them is how they groom their children. Learn this high class mannerism, it will be useful, Merlin said a little impressed with the girl. Orion internally nodded not really getting why it was important but he didn't mind talking with a beautiful girl. I am even surprised that you know I don't talk much, Orion added and finally he was ready to start brewing his potion. Who knows, I just found you interesting at least for someone who couldn't use magic before to suddenly being able to kill a troll, defeat a professor and even write the book which other professors even directly added to our syllabus, let alone the book of such profound language, Daphne said and chuckled a little on the last part. Dash. Snape on the other hand was keeping a note on both Orion and Nick. Nick because Dumbledore said and even though he is the head of the Slytherin house has noticed the dark magic around him. Not to mention Nick suddenly has increased his interaction with Hermione Granger, who is roommates with Rose. 
so even if Dumbledore hadn't asked him to observe Nick, he would have done it. On the other hand, he was observing Orion for completely personal reasons. Dumbledore didn't say anything about Orion and when asked, he said that Snape doesn't have to worry about Orion. He didn't say this to Dumbledore but he too senses the pure untainted magic from Orion. This means not only his improved magic is not achieved by black magic and his technique to improve magic which he describes in the book works but at the same time, this technique can give someone complete pure magic or at least it should. Orion did claim in an increase in magic but nothing was written about purity of magic. Usually, magic is tainted like impurities, which can also reduce the quality of the magic. This eventually makes the magic weak. Black magicians have this problem the most. Their corrupted magic starts to get weak over time if they don't continuously enhance it with more black magic further corrupting them. That's why black magic is so looked down upon. Light magic on the other hand is non-corrupting in name but usually is also not as strong as black magic. Black magic can also be pure in its intensity. Usually, purity means the intensity and quality of magic. So yeah in a way black magicians can have high purity or density in their magic but because of its corrupting nature, it's never considered pure magic. Till today there is only one kind of pure magic which can be achieved by mastering light magic to the extreme like Dumbledore has, of course. Light magic is inherently weaker than black magic meaning it requires more time and effort to cultivate. The magical purity of a person defines the upper heights of a person, Orion might be just a second year right now with magic just like any second year student but his magical potency is stronger than even some of the six year students with considerably more magic power. To explain is better to think about a cup. One is smaller and the other is bigger. Smaller ones hold less milk and bigger ones can hold more. Milk here is magic while cup is the magical core of a wizard. Orion's cup is small and so is his magic but it's pure like 100% milk while others have more magic but it's not pure like a mix of milk and water. Not pure magic. This is the purity of magic, how much chaotic energy one core can have. Snape has never seen pure magic before. Not even in Dumbledore the supposed greatest white wizard of this era. Snape can bet all his potions that Dumbledore will try to get Orion's secret. But if what he has written in his book, no matter how much crude wording he may use, then Dumbledore can't achieve it. Orion mentioned in the book that the technique is a general technique which can be done by anyone but it's not very effective. The one he used is more attuned to his own body, mind and magic. He didn't give us his own method because it was created for him and won't work for us or anyone else but just him. He did say that he created his own technique based on the general core binding technique written in the book and others could do that but he also mentioned explicitly that any changes in his base core binding technique should be done at our own risk. Snape just signed, just looking at the potential of the boy in front of him, he was a little afraid but at the same time, he then looked at Rose. Considering that Ryan in future will grow much stronger and be a good person, he can say it by what he absorbed last year when the boy didn't think twice before killing a troll and even killing Quirrell with that punch, that news was never leaked otherwise Orion would have been in trouble, Snape just sign, at least there is someone good in her life. But then again he thought that both of the times, Orion was saving Granger, his eyes twitch. He looked at Rose just to find out that although she was sitting with that fool Weasley, just looking like Lily, her attention was on Orion glancing at him from time to time and looking at green grass with unknown eyes. Snape suddenly found this situation very similar, didn't this happen to him? He used to be in the same position as Rose right now, looking at Lily and from far away. He understood those glances more than anyone. Chapter 66 Chapter 66 Daphne and Potion Class 2 Unknown to Rose and Snape's thoughts on his new friend, at least he is considering Daphne a friend, Orion started his potion brewing. Why you are using your hands, use force, the more you use it and better you will be able to control it, Merlin complains on the side. Maybe later, my control is still lacking. Not to mention I rather not make my pot nuclear just because I want to use a newly learned magic, was Orion's swift reply. You sure know how to make a potion, Daphne on the side said, looking at Orion expertly managing all the ingredients and even maintaining a perfect balance in temperature and magical input, she was impressed. She was learned quite a lot about potions, this is practically the only magic a miner can do without a wand and being an heir to one of the noble houses of green grass she had all the resources to learn potions in her free time. Green grass is a family that has always been close to nature, they never have been the richest or strongest but they hold significant leverage on herbs and potion material as it is their family business. Thank you, I usually practice in my free time, Orion replied but actually he didn't practice much only a few times, it was his special magic which allowed him to learn things faster. 
I learned this potion from my mother. She taught me when I was only eight but I still can't do it properly. How do you handle the magic proportions so well? Daphne asked but Orion did feel a hint of jealousy in her voice. He was able to do so thanks to his magical sensing capabilities, although almost every capable witch or wizard can sense magic to some extent but that is limited to being able to tell whether magic exists at one point or not. Orion on the other hand can not only sense magic from a long distance but also distinguish between different magics and even identify their flows, something that even Dumbledore and other top wizards of this era can't do. Merlin can of course do it but only after years of honing his skills and developing his magical circuits. This is not fair, I have spent too much time learning potion and still can't do it and then you come, and make it look so easy. TCH, I hate talented people, Daphne said with much ire in her voice. She was not joking either, she really felt inferior to Orion right now. Orion started to get a hold of her personality by now, she just speaks her mind as long as it's not any important information she is talking about. A little on the bratty side while also not giving much contempt to others or thinking about Bullard's supremacy. Yeah, some people are born with talent princess, it's a gift. You two got beauty didn't you, I believe it's a fair deal, Orion added without much thinking. Actually he didn't have any knowledge about Daphne, he never bothered to read all the books and in movies, she was even worse than a side character. So unlike others, he was meeting and talking to Daphne without any prior understanding of her character. Oh you think I am beautiful. Daphne was like that girl, who always wanted to ease and try to put pressure on the boy to fluster him. Not backing down, the exact opposite of Hermione or Rose. Do you even have to ask? I didn't say before thinking that you get that a lot. Orion acted like a chad and didn't even look at Daphne when saying this, still making the potion. He was almost completed. Not much, but I couldn't mind hearing it from a handsome author like you, Daphne said with a little teasing tone, maybe other boys of Orion's age blushed but not Orion. Especially when Merlin will roast him alive for being a lilicon. Somehow he learned that word and now is only looking for the opportunity to use it on Orion. This is the first time a girl is calling me handsome so I can only take your words for it, Orion said honestly. No way, are you telling the truth? Daphne honestly sounded surprised and her voice was a little louder than the normal whisper we were doing to not attract Snape. Knowing her mistake she then didn't say anything and both of us waited until Snape's attention was drawn by something else. Really? No one told you that you look handsome still now? She was again coming back to her normal whispering tone. Nope, Orion swiftly answered and he added the last ingredient to the potion, which was almost completed. It was not like he didn't know that he was handsome, in fact, especially after absorbing that unicorn and its traits started to manifest in him. He unknowingly charmed Rose in the King Cross and in Flourish and Blot Bookshop. The same was the case with Ginny back then. After finding out why they acted like that, Orion immediately asked Merlin for a way to hide his charm if possible. Right now he was nothing less than a male version of Vila. I'm not sure about HP world but here, I have decided to only have female Vila. Merlin didn't give him a spell directly, stating that he needed to make a spell for himself. Another of his tests. But Orion was able to do it. The only problem here is that the spell he was using to hide his charm only stays on until he is not using magic. As soon as he uses magic, he can't hold back his charm. I see, Daphne, not stating what she was seeing. And voila, we are done, Orion completed the potion, and only then he realized that there was no we in this, that this cunning girl didn't do shit to make it. Indeed he has to be attentive when around her. He didn't point it out and was about to show his potion to Snape but then suddenly something happened. It was like his magic buzzing in his ears, like saying to be aware of something. He looked at where the buzz was coming from and instantly noticed Seamus Finnegan the artist of the highest caliber who understood that art is an explosion, was about to make another one of his masterpieces. Shit, the word escapes his lips before he knows it, and something happens which makes Merlin smile. In that split second, Orion didn't go for his wand to cast magic but he extended his hand out. Boo underscore shoot the blast happens or before even it can create much sound it stops. No. More like the entire blast froze midair like time stopped for it. A powerful and potent magical wave sweeps across the class, snapping everyone's head towards the Seamus seat. But no one said anything, after seeing the blast stop midway, their attention went towards Orion who was extending his hand towards the blast and potent magical fluctuations were emitting from him. Believe in the force you have, guide you it shall, rhyming from ear to ear, Merlin imitated a certain alien. Every student was looking at this with awe while even Snape for a second did nothing about helping Orion out and kept on watching the display of flawless wandless magic. 
he suddenly remembers the line in Orion's book. If after reading this that high-class bastards let me live, then I might write another book, remember when I saw that ones are killing your true potential, I was not joking you know. They are good but your magic should never depend on them. So for those who want to go plus ultra, whatever that means as Snape at this point stop asking about all sorts of terms Orion uses in his book, it's either wandless or it's freedomless with that wand. At this time, Orion's charm hiding magic also came undone and his aura changed, pure untainted magic came out as a very slight aura of light engulfed him entirely making him look like an elf from Tolkien's works. His eyes gleamed with magic whilst he also extended his other hand and compressed the blast before sending it to the empty section of the room. Boom the explosion after that made everyone come out of their daze but by now Orion was back to his normal self, his charm suppressing magic again kicking in. That was bloody brilliant, run from the side said and Rose with her mouth open just nodded like a little fangirl. Even Hermione who was angry with Orion earlier couldn't wait to go to him and ask, what the fuck was that? Many people were amazed by Orion's magical feed just now but none other than the girl sitting just beside him and two people from Slytherin, Nick, and Snape. Merlin, he is handsome, she muttered under her breath for the first time blushing in the entire class. Beside the power, she actually saw the real charm of Orion which he was holding back. Chapter 67, Chapter 67, Daphne and Potion Class 3 Now everyone in the class was silent, the worthless and magicless kid just performed wandless magic. If this is not surprising then what is right? Just how utterly ridiculous this situation was is only backed by the silence of Professor Snape and the culprit himself. They wanted to walk up to him and open his brain to get the answer to how he did it but the presence of Professor Snape stopped them. Ambrosius, who are you trying to show off, Snape snapped toward Orion but this time with even more vigor and walked up to him. All the time a mental prompt was sent to Orion's mind, this time he was trying to figure out how Orion did the wandless magic. Orion panicked a little seeing that Snape was looking for a memory which is shielded by his mental barrier. It's not open and available alongside his non-important memories which he doesn't guard and lets others see as a deception that they have access to his mind. Calm down, just break the eye contact slowly and try to explain, Merlin saw Orion panicking and advised. They actually did prepare for a situation like this but in his panic, Orion didn't think of that. Ah no professor, I just saw Seamus's pot was about to explode and to save him and rose there, I had to stop the explosion, Orion said while immediately removing the eye contact and looking the place where the blast happened as he was frustrated and even added Rose's name because her and Lily's name work like cheat code in front of Snape if you use it right. It was his good luck that Rose was sitting just one row ahead of Seamus so yeah the blast really would have reached Rose and injured her. Snape hearing Rose's name finally remembers that Rose too was sitting near the explosion range and immediately snapped back at Seamus. And you, you are the worst dunderhead among all the idiots I had to teach. Five points from Gryffindor, Snape shouted, not even going through many of the interesting insults reserved for students like Seamus. Anger was in his voice. Sorry brah, but you caused this so take responsibility, Orion thought while looking at Seamus and five points to Gryffind or Ambrosius, Snape said while going back to his seat but not before glancing at Rose to make sure she was all right. Now if the class was silent before, it was like everyone just lost their voices. Oh my god, Professor Snape giving points, that too to a Gryffind or. Hey is something like this has happened before? Shush, quiet it down or he will hear us. Write this day down my friend, today we have seen history unfold in front of our very eyes. Hush murmurs broke out in the class, almost everyone was stunned in the class but none more than Orion. He blinked, hearing the hush whispers thanks to enhance hearing and question his own reality. Maybe the cheat code worked better than he expected. After that he just sat down, not even talking with or answering an excited Daphne's barrage of questions. He just replied all the with, we'll talk later. Dash. Orion had his potion ready but he waited until the end of the class, not wanting to attract more attention than it was necessary. So by the end of the class, he finally stood up with Daphne on his trail and showed his potion to Snape. It was a book-perfect potion with no mistake. It's usable, was the only response he got, but in Snape's language, it means that it's perfect at least by any normal 12-year-old standard. His own standards were much higher. Orion was happy with that remark and was about to retreat to safety but before that, Snape shouted. Potter are you not done yet? This sudden targeting left both Ron and Rose baffled. How come the esteemed professor turned his gazes towards the two failures of the class, was both Rose and Ron was pondering over now? Snape didn't stop there though, 
Are you sure it's a potion and not the snort from a troll? Yeah, remember the unique insults I talked about earlier? Orion even doubts that Snape besides jerking off after thinking about Lily and making potions, dedicates the rest of his time to coming up with these unique insults. Both Rose and Ron didn't have any response and thus stayed quiet but Snape was having none of it. I have no idea why two dunderheads are sitting together anyway. Merlin only knows what kind of disaster you two can bring together, I rather not have another bomb manufacturer in my class. Ambrosius, from now on you will sit with Potter here, make sure that she doesn't blast herself to her dreaded father. And you Weasley, go will sit with Iron over there, Snape said and dismissed the class. But everyone involved in this was surprised if not anything. Orion was happy that he would be sitting with Rose, he greatly liked her company, and it could have been worse, like sitting with Nick, Ron or Draco. Rose was overjoyed and had to hold back the smile threatening to appear on her face, but Snape noticed that lastly Ron and Nick, Ron were cursing inside while Nick was hiding hatred when he looked at Ron. Lastly, Snape did it because he saw Rose looking at Orion during the entire class, not to mention the kid really did protect Rose and was mostly likely good company for her. Dash. But that was not the end of Ryan's trouble when he was just about to leave the enemy territory, he was spotted, I mean Snape held him back. Yeah professor, he asked again not looking at his eyes, actually he was just not making contact for long enough for Snape to find his hidden memories. He just acted like a nervous second year Gryffindor. Snape after holding him back didn't immediately ask anything but tried to invade his mind. He was successful but Ryan's constant fidgeting and breaking eye contact was infuriating. Not to mention Snape was no Dumbledore, his mental attack could only barely navigate through the mind with just eye contact, and he needed his wand for better control. It was still better than others who can only read surface thoughts but still not enough. And when it comes to surface thoughts, that was another thing which was infuriating him to know how. I guess I will die early. Man I really wanted to marry and have children but I guess that's not something I can do now. Maybe I can convince him to not kill me and just break my arms but how? Sorry, my future wife, but your husband will never be able to meet you. Oh man, I really wanted to complete my other books before ending here. Merlin, I am still single and virgin. Can't you wait until I live a little more to take my life? Don't drag me in this. I shouldn't have cast that magic before, B. But if not then that blast surely would have injured Rose, I don't want her to hurt but maybe rather than blocking the blast, I should have created a barrier to prevent her from getting hit. Maybe I could remove O2 for the blast to never occur, but how one is supposed to do that? Guess I will die before finding out. Orion was constantly generating nonsense in his mind, a very unique skill of his, to distract Snape, he even added the cheat code here and there believing that it was the ultimate anti-Snape weapon. And it worked, Orion's thinking speed was much much faster than Snape could even comprehend. This was another something which he had gotten over time, his technique needed fast processing speed in his mind. Thus he had developed his brain and conditioned it like that. Snape almost felt nauseating after trying to navigate the constant barrage of thoughts inside Orion's mind. He just touched the bridge of his nose as the headache was coming to him. This was the firewall which both Orion and Merlin came up with, Orion could have easily used this method but was too panicked to think of anything at that time. Ambrosius, tell me how you do it, Snape ultimately asked the question which was in his mind all this time. The last thought Orion ended when Snape talk was losing his V-card so unknowingly he thought. Is he asking me how to lose virginity? There is no way right. Does he really not know how to do it? He can't be. He can't be a virgin right? And even if he is, why ask me? I am a virgin too, you know. Hell I don't even have a girlfriend yet and I ain't that popular with girls either. Orion just couldn't stop his high speed thinking on time and started going on the rabbit hole which was much bigger than he even could imagine. Snape hearing his mind couldn't help but twitch his eyes. Chapter 68, Chapter 68, Political Ramifications Orion finally got out of Snape's class, that being the case he just resented the man for wasting his twenty minutes of break time. Snape wanted to know many things, like how Orion did the wandless magic and about all the things which Orion wrote in his book, especially related to his claim that it's possible for squibs to use magic. Snape especially asked this as Orion mentioned in the book that a particular potion can do that. It was a combined product of both Orion and Merlin to create a potion which could help form a magic core and strengthen the magic circuits for a squib, allowing him to use magic. The concept was very similar to what he learned from his integration technique and the process he went through to form his own core, and of course, the reason he made this potion was to get more money and fame in the wizarding world. 
Anything Snape asks about his book, Orion answers willingly but when he starts questioning things which he will only be covering in his future books or is never planning to release he just replies one thing. I will explain about that more in my next book so you have to wait until that. Because you are a pest act you and all but I am a no nonce kind of a guy when it comes to my business. Yes, he had to then suffer through Snape's insufferable stare like Snape had lent him money and now is asking it back. That was just another level of torture which he never wanted to go through again period. But in the end, Orion's greed for money won and he didn't spill a single bean about his next book or anything beyond that. Dash. By the time he arrived at the central hall to get lunch, he saw all the eyeballs on him. He also saw a stack of books at the corner of the hall. They were his books all right, and now he know how Marcus delivered those books so fast. He bloody never edited them, I swear the bastard never even read the book and just sent them to the publishing house for printing, Orion cursed again. Oh I bet he read it. In fact, I bet that he only after reading it decided not to even ask you and just publish the book like this, Merlin chipped in from the side. This annoyed Ryan even more. Actually, once we are all okay with that rainbow vomit language of yours then it is actually a pretty interesting book to read. I in fact see witches and wizards reading this book and for once really enjoying it. Strange as it is that I am saying that for an educational book on magic and its theory, I too find the book really annoying and yet fascinating in the way you have written the book, it kinda fresh and new, Merlin added and for the first time, Orion thought that the old man is not being sarcastic and genuinely praising him. So with that Orion came near Rose and sat beside her. Yo, permanent potion partner. How's your day going so far, Orion said with a smile and took a cupcake for himself while also putting it on Rose's plate. No don't, I am already full, Rose tried to argue but Orion just did it nonetheless. Sighing Rose just said. It's been good, thank you for saving me back there. It's really dangerous sitting near Seamus, Rose said and chuckled although the way she responded made it obvious that those were fake laughs, but her gratitude was sincere. I'm something bothering you Rose, you look down for some reason, Orion although wasn't the best when it came to human emotions still could tell that Rose was feeling down. Are you no, nothing, Rose said and smiled. HMM strange, Orion was about to ask more but before he could open his mouth, he heard other voices coming. Orion my man, you were fabulous today, I heard what you did. Hell by now the entire school might know what has happened. You might not know but you are very quickly turning into a celebrity, Fred and George came out of nowhere and shouted in his ear. What are you talking about, I did nothing. Nothing he says, did you hear him, Fred? Of course George, oh my friend you don't know how your actions have shaken the school. Okay what are you talking about, Orion asked not even knowing which brother said which sentence. You got points for Gryffindor from Professor Snape, Hermione suddenly interjected, her inclusion was a little surprising considering how chummy she was being with Nick. Is that really that big of a deal, Orion asked, fully knowing how big of a deal it was but he needed them to have their fill so he acted like he was not privy to the situation at hand. Orion, in the last ten years of his teaching in Hogwarts, Professor Snape has hardly given points to other houses besides his own, not to mention no Gryffindor ever gets points from him, never. You have done something that no one has done over a decade, Hermione said in a very Hermione-like fashion. Well that's good I guess, Orion replied still nonchalant about this contribution to his house. To some Gryffindor, this means much more than even winning the house trophy. Merlin, Orion you're acting like it's not a big deal at all. You should be proud of what you have accomplished, run from the side said, Orion suddenly questioned himself why he was suddenly talking to him, not like they were good friends or anything. Every year Gryffindor lose more than 100 points because of Professor Snape, Fred said. Yes, you might not realize it my friend but this is a victory not only against the oppression we Gryffindor have been suffering for years but also a sign, George said with much dramatic antics. That's good but I'm not interested in this sign or any other signs. Saying that Orion just rolled his eyes and ignored others and was about to back to attending to his juicy cupcake but another voice rang in his ears. Mr. Ambrosius. I have to say that I'm very disappointed in you. Orion turned back and saw Daphne standing there with both hands on her waist and glaring right at him with narrow eyes. Both Hermione and Rose at this raised their eyebrows, now interested in what's going on. This must be the first time that Ryan and Daphne have met right, how come she came all the way from the slithering table to talk with him? And may I ask why you are disappointed in me princess, Orion's usual talking style changes in front of a sharp individual like Daphne? he just can't talk like how he does with others. Actually, even though his mental growth is fixed at 16, 
and he is not 25 plus years old mentally still he feels like talking with kids when he interacts with most of his friends. So talking with Daphne today was kind of interesting for him. Daphne almost gave a scandalized look at Orion's response, much dramatic this one Orion internally chuckled. I never expected this from a gentleman such as you to forget your promise that we will talk later, Daphne said playing along with my princess and night game. Orion rewinds his mind a little to remember that when she was blasting question after question, he told her that he would talk later, not wanting to attract more of Snape's attention. Honestly, he was not afraid of Snape, he didn't do anything wrong to be afraid of in the first place but not attract wrong attention just to save him from another six years of trouble so yeah, he is not messing with his leisure and carefree life anytime soon. I was talking about much later, but it's fine, tell me what you want to ask but you are warned, if there is anything which I might be putting in my next book, then I can't answer you, Orion kept on eating and replied to Daphne. He honestly wanted to talk to Hermione and find out what the deal was with her and Nick Owen but with everyone practically climbing on top of him for his attention, this was not the time. How rude, and that too when I came all the way here just to ask you, Daphne huffed, still playing the spoiled princess. At this time, Orion didn't observe as his attention was acquired by food and Daphne but others had already become silent while watching his and Daphne's interaction. Some had knowing smiles on their faces, and some had strange looks on their faces, while some, well. Hermione and Rose to be exact were watching this conversation with a sweet smile, although anyone but our idiot MC could tell that it was force. Dash. Soon though the conversation came to a halt as McGonagall came and finally announced why all those books were in the hall in the first place. Now students please quiet down, listen carefully, McGonagall said and waited for the hall to quieten down. This is the book which Mr. Ambrosius has written, many of you might have already heard about and heard praises of the book but remember that not all things can be perfect. Mr. Ambrosius uses very strong language to express his opinions in his book and while the professors love the book itself and all the knowledge Mr. Ambrosius gave us through it, the language is much to be desired. Even after trying we found it hard to convert that strong language which he used into something more appropriate without changing the meaning entirely. McGonagall said while glaring daggers at Orion. Orion by that glare alone knew that his leisure life which he was trying so hard to protect might have already been ruined. He did it by his own hands. Orion knew what McGonagall was talking about, and then suddenly realized that when writing the book, he integrated his aka very strong language pretty much everywhere, so much so that now it will require him and Merlin to actually rewrite the entire book again with more kids-friendly language. This ain't no normal book, after all, it's a magic book. Wordings matter here and plays a very important role compared to a normal book, like how in a law book, the words used are very important as it's not always about facts but also dealing with complex things such as human emotion during a particular case and why the outcome of that case was what it was. So we have decided to deliver this book to you all but I will warn you, the school will not tolerate any inappropriate language on the school grounds. The offender will be punished gravely. Meaning as long as it's not school grounds. And thus I want you to make this sure. We professors agree that the book itself is fabulous but the language is not and we will not condemn that kind of language here in Hogwarts. Professor said yet again while looking at Orion. Geez women, why purchase the book if you have so much problem with its language, Orion complains internally. Well it's simple, sooner or later the powerful greedy and corrupt ministry will try to ban this book, at this point pretty much anyone who reads the book knows it's worth meaning Dumbledore knew too that the ministry would try to somehow monopolize it. It was a risky move on his part but by making this book as a part of the syllabus here in Hogwarts he is trying to preserve this book. Once the book really falls in the hands of the wizarding crowds, even those wizards who support ministry will not allow the book to be banned, let alone the Pulards. Orion was stunned, he never gave much thought to the political structure and ramifications while writing this book, and suddenly he started to feel cold sweats forming on his back. He might be in a big rabbit hole then he realizes. So Mr. Too Many Names Dumbledore help us? He asked trying to understand the situation. No, don't think like that, he helped himself, if he pushes this book to be available to the masses then indirectly his name is also getting attached to this. He was helping himself, and indirectly helping us as well. There are only two reasons he did so. One because he will get a much more positive light by using your work if he supports your book as he knows the book is a gold mine, and the second is that this way he will ensure that there is a second book. And again everything comes down to your intentionally holding back information. The reason why the old geezer was asking so many questions yesterday in his office was because this magical know-how is something he wants, 
Snape is in the same boat, Merlin said and the situation started to become more clear. Chapter 69, Chapter 69, Headmaster's Thoughts and Going Wandless. Dumbledore was sitting in his office, contemplating what just Snape told him in the break time. Wandless magic at this age, and he even revealed it just to save Rose and his other classmates, Dumbledore slowly muttered to himself. Snape himself checked the boy's mind, he used wandless magic, which he clearly wasn't planning on revealing, to save Rose. But when asked, he outright refused to provide any explanation for it whilst only replying you will know when my next book comes out. Dumbledore was honestly intrigued and confused by this revelation. After all wandless magic is a very complex art, only he and Geralt were able to do it while to some extent even Tom could. But it's him, Geralt and Tom. They are the greatest and strongest wizards of this generation, and now a twelve-year-old boy who couldn't even do any magic just last year, now comes and shows wandless magic like it was a first-year spell which could be done with some practice and the right words. So this had made him the greatest wizard of this generation, very confused and interested in Orion. Clearly, the child is not going dark, if he couldn't even tell that child's bright and untainted magic apart from that foul magic and corrupt magic that comes with dark magic then he is not worthy of holding the name of the greatest wizard in Britain. So no, the child is not going dark and even his character is very pleasing. Otherwise, he wouldn't have revealed his capabilities just to save Rose. Despite not knowing how Orion did it, or what is his secret Dumbledore is willing to believe in his own instincts. Actually, the boy has shown signs of his genius even before he came to Hogwarts, being able to make a potion in nothing but a forest to cure his body when he wasn't even aware of magic speaks volumes about his capabilities. Dumbledore talks much about him to other professors and everyone, even Snape has good things to tell about him. He didn't have much magic last year. This was even tested so he doesn't doubt the claim. But Orion was diligent in his studies even after that. In fact, almost all the time he was found studying and doing strange exercises. Although it was a strange exercise to others Dumbledore's intuition tell him otherwise. But yet he does not willingly tell how he does it, Dumbledore muttered to himself. Well, that was not the truth, as Orion specifically told Snape that he would not enclose any information that he might or might not put in his next book. Dumbledore after much interaction with Orion knew that if there was one bad trait that existed in that boy then it was greed for money. It was nothing much and very much understandable when coming from an orphan boy who used to live in a forest alone. Dumbledore just like Merlin said to Orion, supported Orion's book because it was favorable for him. But honestly, he didn't have much connection with that boy. Getting inside his head is nothing less than an invitation to a headache, Dumble had found that Orion's thinking speed is fast, and he means really fast, and when he panics it just tends to increase. Unfortunately, the boy panics a lot if he or Snape directly looks into his eyes, something which is necessary for a mental connection to be formed. Dumbledore groaned after thinking about the headache he had last night after trying to enter into Orion's mind. Just in a minute, the boy went from thinking about releasing another book to guessing how many girls his headmaster would have been with, even bet that he would definitely be a ladies' man, and there were hundreds if not thousands of details rich thoughts in between. No wonder the boy could come up with something like this book, he is just naturally gifted, another groan escaped his lips. At least he could take a little solemn that Snape faces the same fate, poor Severus even had to take the day off thanks to his headache. And the problem doesn't stop, although no matter how revolutionary that book is, it's just a headache when the book language is anything to go by. Even the a century old man ended up blushing after reading it. He honestly wouldn't have pushed the book if it was not that good, just the basics of magic and some tools and techniques to improve but it was priceless. He knows that he can't stop this from spreading. The boy has come up with this on his own which most likely is the case then he can come up with it again even if dumbled or remove his memories. So going against him and capitalizing on this is not the way to go, rather he should earn that boy's favor and also take some credit for the book in the meantime. Dumbledore sign again and ponder on how to manipu. I mean bring the boy by bright side. And while he was at it, he also wondered about another boy of the same age but in Slytherin's house. Dash. Other professors and students were not much different, although they clearly were not creating a master plan to manipu. Cough cough I mean bringing the boy to the side of light. They too are thinking about Ryan. And at this time, Orion was in the room of requirement. This year he has planned to ditch mull studies and history lessons altogether. Last year he didn't have mull studies but from the second year it is compulsory until the fourth year and then he can choose to either continue it or ditch it. Well he doesn't need history classes. 
he is a little walking encyclopedia of history that dates from the same era as Jesus Christ himself. And when it comes to Mull studies, well it's not much different than history considering the course just teaches how Mulls used to live in stone caves and use rocks to make fire. This extremely dated piece of teaching of course comes with a healthy dose of wizard supremacy. Tell the little witches and wizards how much better they are compared to those worthless moles. So, what we are learning today, Orion asked with a tired face as the entire day was extremely hectic for him. Ah, we will continue with force training and only do that until you have at least reached a zenith. Learning anything more right now is not worth it, you also have your usual Hogwarts studies anyway. But there will be a catch. Marin said while smiling a little. A catch? Orion already didn't like the sound of this. Whenever Merlin gave off that smile, nothing good came from his mouth. From now on you will completely ditch your wand. Ha, huh, ain't I already doing it? Using force than wand magic for most of my needs, Orion replied in a nonchalant manner not getting what Merlin was trying to say here. No no, not like that. I mean from now on you will learn how to cast magic, all kinds of magic wandless, Merlin added and waited for the outburst. What, that's insane, dude are you trying to make my life more troublesome? Ain't I already learning force, a really powerful wandless magic? Why completely ditch the wand? Orion protested and huffed. Merlin on the other side just sighs and explains. That's because you can do it, many including me might not be able to as our magic circuits are not as developed as yours. Even I took centuries to develop my magic circuits to your level. If you use a wand then it will be very easy for you to do magic but then your development still stagger. You won't reach your true potential. Consider those developed magic circuits as gifts and talents which you have. You are inherently now better than others but a genius who doesn't work hard is worthless, and can eventually will be surpassed by a commoner who works hard. Remember we wrote in the book that whilst we grow up, our magic circuits need the most work. Believe me, right now that wand is your biggest enemy. It will stop your progress. Orion after hearing this let out an irritating sigh but ultimately understood what Merlin was trying to say here. Fine, but I can't just ditch the wand. That will attract more attention towards me, Orion said dejectedly. Oh that's easy enough, make a fake wand and carry both, only use the real one if it's absolutely necessary. Chapter 70, Chapter 70, A Charms Class and Wandless Magic 1 Another day started with the same old routine, Orion found himself exercising early in the morning and then dancing. Practicing force while he matched the flow of nature, replicating movements sometimes like a ballet and sometimes a martial artist. An important part of this exercise was maintaining systematic breathing while performing force. Now he could swallow this if this was a martial art of some sort but how his breathing mattered with his magic was beyond him, Merlin was apparent about performing the correct breathing and staying in tune with the rhythms. So after the embarrassing dance, he was ready to tackle all of his class and excel in all of them. Entering into the main hall. The entire area was buzzing with activity, students were everywhere, some talking and making enough noise for the entire castle to hear, some studying much like his friend Hermione and some were just strictly there to eat like him. But those things are the most mundane things about a morning in Hogwarts. The difference which was taking place than usual today was a large group of students flexing a white book around. A groan escaped to Ryan's lips as he caught a glimpse of the book. Why are you getting annoyed, it's your book they are reading. You should be proud that so many students, your peers, are reading your book in their own initiation, Merlin added. Orion listened to Merlin and grumbled under his breath, he was not unhappy about them reading his book, in fact, he wanted this to happen, after all only when they liked the book so the sales would increase. He was bothered by the subtle glances students were sending him, like they saw an obscurus, for those who are too lazy to google it, it's a magical child turning into a rampaging monster. So just like any other day, he just brushed past them and sat his ass near one of the two girls he was most familiar to. Someone is getting popular, before he could even say hi or good morning, he heard a voice. Glancing back he saw Daphne standing there holding her breakfast, clearly intending to sit there in the Gryffindor table with Orion. She only talked with him anyway. Yesterday was the first time Orion had any interaction with Daphne, so it's suspicious why the girl acted so chummy with him. Usually, when a beautiful girl is nice to you, consider it a good sign that you are not outright atrocious in the looks department. But on the contrary, if a beautiful girl acts all chummy with you all of a sudden, it's a clear red flag. Orion have used a legal immensely attack on her a long time ago if only she wasn't wearing an heir's ring. Those rings come with passive defense with any weak legal attack. As the universal rule stands, 
Nothing is impossible as long as enough force is applied in the right way, breaking this shields is not hard either, Hell Orion believes that he doesn't even need a wand to do so considering his attainments in the mind arts. But he rather not break open the mind of one of the heirs of 28 sacred families just because the girl acting too friendly with him. Good morning to you too, a sarcastic reply makes him feel better and ease his irritated mind. Although he likes the attention that only when they are people he knows. Unwanted attention from the entire school is a pain. Good morning Rose, Hermione. What you girls are up to, Orion before Daphne started her barrage of questions, first greeted both the girls. Rose gave a cheerful smile, maybe because he ignored the Slytherin princess for once and focused on her, or maybe just because she was in a good mood. Hermione on the other hand was different, practically glued to the same book which other students were carrying like it was the Holy Bible. Orion could see a dark circle under her eyes, and then noticing that she was on page number 289, Orion eyes twitch. I bet that she didn't sleep at all to read that book, Merlin remarked and Orion agreed without a second of a doubt. Rose on the side seeing her friend no responding, nudged her with her elbow and drew her attention away from the beautiful world of that book to reality. What? Hermione jolted and snapped at Rose, asking what happened. Good morning Hermione, Orion once again said but this time with a cheesy smile. Seems like you like my book. Our book, Merlin added while puffing on his pipe. Yeah yeah, you don't exist for others so it's my book until I am not specifically talking with you, Orion internally replied to the grumbling old man. Like it? This book is insane. You break almost all the rules of every possible magical theory and book writing ethics combined, Hermione was almost on the verge of shouting. It was a higher tone than usual for sure. Why you are reading it so intently if you didn't like it, then, Daphne not knowing much about Hermione's antics about education asked. I never said I didn't like it, I mean it's different, no offense to you Orion but the language is not at all appropriate but everything written in the book just far surpasses the knowledge of any magical book I have found in Hogwarts. Only after going through it, do I understand why even after this kind of language used in this book, Professor Dumbledore wants the students to read this. This book alone will bring several revolutions in the wizarding community, Hermione said with a frantic smile, looking much like a crazy scientist who found what an atom is. I'm okay, Orion just shrugged, he was used to Hermione's antics by now and just let her be. Daphne too mimic Orion, clearly not wanting to talk more with a nerdy girl. She had a feeling that she wouldn't comprehend what would come out of her mouth next. But she does agree with what Hermione said, the book was a masterpiece if the trash language was not a factor something which can be easily changed if Orion so desires. Hell at this time, even Dumbledore had to accept that a chaotic core would take the place of the Bible in the wizarding world sooner or later. Even if Orion doesn't want to he shares something with the wizarding world which will change the future of magic for everyone. A simple example of this is when Orion was writing this book, Merlin told him that after reading this book, as long as the person practices some of the basic steps and exercises are given in it, reaching the heights of Dumbledore or Gerald Grindelwald is nothing hard. Any normal wizard can do it, in fact back in his time, wizards of that level were very common. Dash. The first class for today was charms, Orion was in a cheerful mood as Professor Flitwick was one of his favorite teachers. In fact, he might be just the best teacher outside the grid when he took the position of Professor of Magical Beasts in the third year. As all the students entered the class, they saw a short man already waiting for all of them, with a pleasant smile. Good morning Professor Flitwick, how has your vacation been? Orion smiled and asked, giving off similar vibes as Flitwick. And just like he expected, Flitwick didn't torture him about the book he wrote and the god-awful language he used. He might later, but not in front of others and his version will be just a simple comment about the language. Good morning Orion, I have heard a lot about you lately. I read the book. It was superb, simply superb, Flitwick said with much excitement. Glad you like it, Professor, after a simple greeting Orion went back to his seat, sitting next to Rose. The seating arrangement varies from class to class. It was permanent in Flitwick's class, actually, that is how he remembered the faces and names well of all the new students. In fact, he is the kind of teacher who remembers what students did years ago by just looking at the place they used to sit. Students I know that all of you are very excited about the book Mr. Ambrosius has written but I'll be grateful if you can set that aside in my class, Flitwick said after watching students still talking about Orion's book and even reading it, a prime example was Hermione. So an awkward moment and a lot of shuffling of books and pages later, Flitwick finally started. Today we will revise, 
Remember going up in classes is completely in vain if you forgot what you learned in the former year. Now show me the Lumo spell, the levitating spell and the Axio, Flitwick demanded. Finally, students realized the purpose of the few objects placed in front of them. A surprise test right at the start of the year. The grumbles and disappointed looks were endless but there was no escape from this. Someone like Rose, Hermione and Daphne didn't care, Rose was a natural in charms. Hermione was well, Hermione and Daphne too were rare to the noble house of green grass for some reason. Ron and Ryan were the real victims. Orion last year barely passed the test, now he has a gazillion times more magic than last year. Well, not that much but this is adequate for this low-level spell. The source of the problem was his wand, or the lack of one to be exact. Merlin asked him to put his wand in his pendant to stop him from using it. He was holding a fake one. Levitation and Axio are easy enough, as force works the same way but Lumos the illuminating charm is a sore spot for him. Performing that without a wand will be a tough nut to crack. Dash. While Orion was sweating about the task at hand, Flitwick was especially observing him. Besides his book, another very prominent reason why Orion was getting so popular in the castle was his feat of wandless magic in potions class. Practically the entire Hogwarts by now knew it and Flitwick too wanted to see. In his book, Orion has mentioned wandless magic if only briefly and that surely has piqued Flitwick's interest. Chapter 71 Chapter 71, Charm Class and Wandless Magic 2 Orion begrudgingly took out his fake wand and made an ugly face. He wasn't worried a bit about Axio or Levitation's charm. That spell can be done by simple use or force. The finding aspect of Axio can also be done with force with a little change in his intent. But the illuminating charm was different. Force can't produce light, or maybe it can but he hasn't learned it yet. With that said Orion thought to just keep that one for last. So he just waved his hand slowly and the feather in front of him started floating. Yup force is much better than any levitation charm, Orion was glad that he learned force. Bravo Mr. Ambrosius. Looked everyone, Mr. Ambrosius did it and that too without any wand movement and spellless casting, Flitwick who was giving Orion special attention, thanks to his feet in potions class, was surprised and said, attracting everyone's attention. Orion just cursed under his breath after realizing that he was so used to force by now that he completely forgot to even say the spell to act in front of others. He looked around and noticed that the noise had subsided while every eyeball was looking at him. But poor Orion now once again was the center of attention, getting curious and some extent jealous glances from many of his peers, even Hermione. Once again Mr. Ambrosius, please show the class how you make the feather float without spell or wand movements. Flitwick requested but it almost sounded like a demand to Orion. Sighing, he just accepted that the cat was out of the bag already in potions class, it was only time that people realized what he could do. So he again begrudgingly hovered his fake wand above the feather and with just one swing of the wooden stick, which was completely unnecessary by the way, the feather started floating. But this time, Flitwick caught much more details than earlier when he was just excited about what his student did, he too was a master in charms and a champion in dueling. He instantly caught onto the excellent control Orion had on the feather, there was no stability issue or it felt like the charm was weak. In most cases, when someone uses a floating charm, it feels like someone has attached a string to the feather and made it float using those strings. The connection with kept the feather floating looked weak and most of the time that is the case. But not in Orion's case, it was powerful like it was not an invisible string which was making it float but rather a strong invisible hand, with complete control over its direction angle and velocity. Marvelous Mr. Ambrosius, simply marvelous. Let me tell you that even adults can't show this degree of control without using wand movement and spells. Five points to Gryffindor, Flitwick announced. Thank you, Professor Flitwick, Orion said humbly, wanting to end the conversation so Flitwick go away but that wasn't the case. Although the conversation ended the short professor was still standing in front of him, eagerly waiting for his next spell. Muttering something about the persistent professor, Orion moves his focus to the second thing at hand. Axio. This time he remembered to say the spell. Everyone saw a candy which Flitwick put on his table, saying to the students that they could have but the only condition is to use Axio, launch itself from the table and fly towards Orion. Again flawless performance, and Flitwick also nodded. But then came the last part. The illumination spell. This was outside the jurisdiction of force. Remember what I teach you, a wand is just a tool. Even spells are just tools to convey the message to your magic. As long as the message is conveyed, magic will take place. You have ridiculously powerful intent, just focus on light. 
at your level of intent, just a thought is enough, Merlin at this time chips in and reminds Orion of the basics of all magic and casting. HMM okay, Orion calms himself down and closes his eyes, trying to image a light, like a light bulb or the sun, making his intention clear that he wants light. 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 Give me light. And it started to work, his intent was going through the roof, as Flitwick felt the same powerful intent from Orion that he saw last year. But last year, Orion had so little magic that even after all that powerful intent the best he could do was to make a light no stronger than a firefly. But today was different, as the mighty intent of Orion was mixed with powerful magic. A dazzling light started to form between his hands, as the magic totally discarded the fake wand and made the center of Orion's hands its locus. Flitwick was baffled at the position the light appeared, not on the tip of the wand but rather in the middle of the palm as Orion had both his hands up and the palms were opposite to each other like he was holding a football, even though one hand still hold the fake wand. But that amazement was quickly trumped by the light which kept on increasing. Flitwick and the students inevitably have to close their eyes at the blinding light. You might have overdone it there, remember I told you that you need to learn how to handle your intent, Merlin said with a helpless sigh and Orion who just opened his eyes was blinded by his own light. Dash. Surrounded by his friends, Orion then moved towards the last class of the day, defense against dark arts. A totally worthless class if Orion has anything to say about it. Not like it is not important but it can only achieve its desired results if Dada professors are not planning on killing the students oppressing them, are dark lords or werewolves in disguise or are simply incompetent. Unfortunately or fortunately, this year Hogwarts got the incompetent one, and Orion shouldn't be happy about it but when he was considering the alternatives. This was still better. Honestly, almost all the time those Dada teachers the main source of trouble in the school, Merlin added resonating with Orion's belief. After his dazzling performance in Charms class, Professor Flitwick cut one point from Gryffindor for creating a miniature sun inside the classroom minus the heat while also awarding him five points for his excellent use of magic. Flitwick also invites Orion to his charm club, an honor which only a few people get in Hogwarts, even Hermione isn't invited. How did you do it? Came two voices at the same time, they were none other than Hermione and Daphne. Both of them were on his trail to find his secret to do wandless magic and that extremely dazzling light. The fun fact is that Orion can't tell them even if he wants to, because there is no secret to it, he suddenly got the magical lottery of the century and now has as developed magical circuits as Merlin himself, and his raw intent and willpower has sharpened to the extreme thanks to performing integration for many years, were not the reason which he wanted to say. I won't explain in detail as that info is reserved for my next book but in a nutshell, you need very powerful intent to pull it off. But there are shortcuts which one can use, Orion said and he wasn't lying. There are really shortcuts like ancient chants, a series of long magical wording to amplify the intent and output of certain kinds of magic. Merlin has taught him but he never got to use it, or rather the bastard never let him use it even after teaching him. There are no shortcuts to becoming Hokag. Cough cough I mean the wizard king, Merlin said and I quote. I swear I will learn how to block him from my mind and the first thing I'm gonna do is to stop him from consuming more manga and anime, Orion muttered with determination in his mind. But that doesn't explain anything, Rose whined, apparently she too wanted to know. Her reasoning was different, she wanted to use this while she was living with the Dursleys. Orion didn't even have to read her mind to the reasoning, he in fact planned to teach this to Rose, if not anyone but still to her, just a little secret between them. Don't worry, you guys will get the answers soon enough, just wait until my next book is, Orion was saying but then was cut off when someone blocked his path. This someone was none other than Malfoy and his two little bodyguards. Well, identifying them as little would be a crime considering how they were showing all the positive growths on all the negative sides. What you want, Malfoy Hermione and Rose said at the same time, almost in a threatening voice, while Daphne didn't say anything, she didn't want to get involved unless it was absolutely necessary. She was also interested to see how Orion would react. This was quickly becoming her favorite pastime. This guy again. This guy again. Both Ryan and Merlin muttered under their breath and sighed. Chapter 72, Chapter 72, Useless Class, Bonus Chapter. Don't think for a second that you are equal to us just because you wrote a book, you mudblood, Draco uttered with no sense of the environment he was in or his own situation. Even animals understand the natural order of the food chain and keep their distance from the hunters and predators, but this poor fellow just lacks all basic survival instincts. Orion honestly was surprised at how he survived in the books this long. 
JK has to be high when writing this guy's character. Actually, he is a coward. He never stays whenever there is a conflict, Merlin added and both of us just sighed with a headache coming in. What do you want, Malfoy? Orion just asked casually, pretending that he didn't even listen to his earlier comment. The word mudblood is really not that big deal for him, he never believed in blood supremacy. So Draco can call him whatever he wants. It doesn't get inside his skin. But apparently, it was not the case with Rose, Hermione and to some point Daphne as they all were sending glares at Draco. What, are you now siding with this mudblood? Are you also turning a blood traitor? Green grass, Draco asked with much ire towards Daphne. The green grass family has never vouched for blood supremacy but still, it has married in the 28 sacred families for generations. How about we talk this man to man and not involve the girls in this? Tell me what you want. Orion asked again but this time there was a lingering threat on his voice as the devil's tongue doing its magic. A feeling of dread started to engulf Malfoy. This feeling was similar to what he sensed last year. But this was not that strong, Orion was holding back. Actually, his own emotions amplify the effect of the devil's tongue, right now he feels no anger toward the obviously spoiled and misled boy in front of him. It was not his fault, he was just raised wrong. Draco and his other two lackeys didn't say anything after that, maybe too scared of Orion but he doubted it as he intentionally held back his power. So most likely they just didn't have much to talk about in the first place. They just came here expecting it would be easy to bully the Mulborns. I thought so, if you don't have anything worthwhile to say, then get out of the way, you are wasting our time, Orion said and by a simple gesture of his hand, made Draco and his lackey move away and clear the path. For Draco, it was like someone physically pushed him but there was no one, Orion just used force to remove him and his useless two friends to the side, clearing the path of himself and the girls. Dash. Rose. Hermione and Daphne were fascinated towards the wandless magic which Orion casually did on Malfoy, this was the only second time he showed them this. The stingy bastard won't show it to them even faster practically begging him. A huge pout was on all three of their faces, making the already cute and beautiful girls even more adoring. They stop bothering him after he makes it clear that he ain't using wandless magic not because he doesn't want to show them but rather because it's hard to do. A total bullshit on Orion's part but the girl bought the excuse. Currently, they were sitting in the Dada class and in front of them were the ever so lustrous and brave, Guild Roy Lockhart with all his glory. Now I really question that headmaster of yours you know. Even a child with the right mind can tell that this man is a fraud, Merlin had an amused smile on his face after seeing Orion's own face forming a cringe-worthy look that he might get popular in TikTok. This man will pay for the money he made me lose, Orion internally groaned as the man, the myth, the arsehole himself came to the teacher's stage. He had golden hair and was wearing very similar clothes to what movie's portrait. On the side, he had a dozen of his books showcased while on the other side, there was a wide range of skincare and beauty products. Orion has to give this cheater that he does have some sense of business in him. Dash. The entire class was a pile of dog shit, nothing useful happened. Goldilocks was just on and on about his own adventures and his own books. The most surprising fact was that many actually believed him, especially the girls. Orion was sitting with Daphne, Hermione and Rose and to his surprise, only Rose didn't fall for his charm while Hermione and Daphne by the middle of the class had already become his little fang earls. Interesting, Merlin had this knowing smile on his face which Ryan recognized as something shady was going on. May I ask what you find so amusing, Orion asked with raised eyebrows. It's even more interesting that you can't sense it even with your excellent magical senses. But I guess the reason might be because of your willpower and gender as to do with it, Merlin added. Orion was a little taken aback, if there was a foreign magic then he would be the first to notice it, his magic senses are really well developed. So he focused and after establishing a connection with the surrounding magic and sorting all kinds of magic, he found it. This, what is this magic? Never felt this magic before? Orion while exploring the magic of the class found a strange kind of magic which he didn't recognize. Ha ha, it's natural you don't recognize it, this particular magic is never intended to be contacted by the males. It mostly focuses on females, that's why you didn't notice it, it never came in contact with you while you were here, Merlin said and Ryan nodded, he still had much to learn seeing that he couldn't find this magic when it was right in front of him. And now this also brings him to the conclusion that this was Goldilocks doing and this is the cause of all these girls suddenly becoming his fang earls. Most likely Rose is not affected because of what Merlin said before this, willpower. She must have powerful willpower to control the magic passively. 
If I have to say, this is not active magic but a passive one, most likely it mixes with the strange smell in this room. Perfume if I have to say, Orion once got the situation was then quick to figure out his source. Bingo, it's this guy, his perfume. We already know that this guy is a complete cheat thanks to the canon knowledge. What you say, wanna expose this golden retriever while we are at it, Orion asked with a smile. Why not? Cool but now give me a way to bring this girl out of their worship to their great Lockhart's armor, Orion deadpan. Chapter 73, Chapter 73, Remorse for Competition, Bonus Chapter Merlin didn't give any solution to Orion, saying that this one he is to do on his own, making him irritated but he took the challenge, the only downside is that this girls have to stay under Goldilocks influence for a little while more. Rose Potter, suddenly the sound came and everyone's attention was moved to the cute redhead sitting beside Orion, the person who said it was none other than Goldilocks. How were the books which I gave you my dear, I hope you like them, Lockhart asked with his usual smile on his face. Rose at this just smiled nervously and nodded in confirmation. Orion wanted no interaction with Lockhart and thus he kept his head down, but to his bad luck, Goldilocks was having none of it. Well, only time will tell whose bad luck it really was. Mr. Ambrosius, I saw you are sitting with young Rose here. Ah, young love, I had quite a few girlfriends back then myself. He said, making Rose blush furiously while the Orion just didn't buy the sophistry and looked right into his eyes planning on invading his mind, but unfortunately for Orion, the bastard was wearing a special ornament to shield his mind. Orion knew that it was not his own Aculumency and if that was the case then the user could feel his mind getting invaded. Lockhart had no clue that his mind was just under attack. You can force your way in, you are more than capable now, Merlin added his sage advice and Orion had the urge to take that advice but he didn't. He might but right now is not the right time, it's too crowded here. I never expected that among you I would find a fellow author. I have to say that I am a fan of your work Mr. Ambrosius, Lockhart said. Although he didn't want to admit but being a Ravenclaw, he understood the value of the knowledge which that book provided. Actually more like he was yearning for that knowledge and fame for himself. And Orion didn't need to invade Lockhart's mind to see this one coming. It's a very side villain kind of move. Thank you, I too like Mr. Lockhart's books very much, Orion had to struggle to form this sentence. He spat the words with venom covered with sweets. Dash. The interaction with Lockhart's was not long, he didn't plan to talk more and he was saved by the horde of fang earls lashing out when Orion was taking all the precious time of their almighty and Lockhart's armor. With a sign, Orion just waited for the class to end. Fortunately, that didn't take much time, he honestly didn't want to waste more time on Gilroy if possible so he was the first one to get out of the class as soon as the bell rang. Only later from others, he found that Goldilocks looking for him in the class. Good thing that I got out when I had the time, Orion muttered in relief. Right now he was outside in the open, planning to practice force but got interrupted by his friends. So here you are, what are you doing here? He saw Hermione and Rose coming towards him. Ron too was with them. Yo, why are you looking for me? Orion didn't like getting disturbed on his grind but he did promise to spend more time with them. I had a question about your book, Hermione said while showing a chaotic core on her hands. Rose told me about that broom of yours, mate why didn't you show me that broom? You never even told me that you are making brooms. That wicked knowing that you have a business at this age, Ron said with much excitement but a little bit of jealousy. Orion on the other hand almost forgot in his training, effort on socializing and in all the noise his book was making that he had another product almost ready to hit the market. He should be expecting a response from Emmerich, his partner in crime in looting those wealthy wizarding families all over the world and also ruining their favorite sport, all in due time. Ah yes, I was making the broom at the same time I was writing that book, Orion said while pointing at Hermione's hand also realized that he should also start writing the second book in his free time. Can I look at it? Ron asked with much exhilaration in his voice. Orion honestly didn't mind but without his guidance, it could be dangerous. As his own broom is even better than the one he was planning to sell. Black Pegasus might be even faster than an old fighter jet at its fastest speed. Nothing he can just hand over to a child. Let alone, Ron. I would love to Ron. But my broom is a little different, it only works when I am using it, I had to make it like that because it's not like any normal broom. Ask Rose what I am talking about she knows, Orion said and kicked the ball to Rose. Rose instantly nodded, a little horror appearing on her beautiful and cute face. She almost screams her lungs out when sharing that broom with Orion. 
and later that bastard told him that it was not even 50% cent of the real speed that Broom can achieve. Rose just got goosebumps thinking about it and her face went pale. Orion was not lying here, the top speed of a normal Pegasus is 400 to 500 km per hour which is a little more than double that of the fastest flying broom which has shown in the Harry Potter series, the Firebolt. And his black Pasigus can achieve a stable 1000 km per hour at its max. But that was not even the craziest thing, he further improved it, being infatuated with bikes in his last life, he modified even to the point of no return. Now his broom can achieve the speed of 2,000 km per hour for a short period of time. That is almost similar to a Mach 2 speed. Not to mention, it was not just speed he modified. Even the looks and sound of the broom were modified to give that powerful monster vibe. He can't believe that no one can fall in love with that broom seeing what it can really do. If Orion was proud of anything besides his Greek god body then it has to be that broom. He was just waiting to take that baby on a test drive in the upcoming Quidditch match. He might get on the team just because he has that broom. A broom which is ten times faster than the current fastest broom on the planet. He he, he couldn't help but let out an evil laugh. Orion. Hermione called. Ha. Huh. What happened, suddenly you dazed out and then started laughing like a madman, Hermione asked with confusion in her tone. Ah nothing nothing, just showing remorse to my future competition, Orion casually said. I have questions. Hermione asked not even paying attention to Orion's reply, chucking that last bit in him being a boy. Boys, Hermione and Rose both just sighed and shook their heads. 30. Chapter 74, Chapter 74, Ministry, Bonus Chapter. London Ministry of Magic. In the heart of the magical government, the Ministry of Magic, a wave of intrigue swept through the higher echelons as rumors of a groundbreaking book titled The Chaotic Core by Orion D'Ambrosius reached the ears of influential figures. Although the major reason their attention was drawn by the book wasn't the action of Dumbledore suddenly announcing the book will be a part of the syllabus in Hogwarts it was a major point, the real culprit was those purer bloods whose children informed them about a certain book written by a certain mudblood, and obviously later those purer blood families contacted the ministry. A chaotic core did not have much reputation yet but those who read it were sure of one thing, that this book will change the magic of the wizarding world forever. The sheer brilliance and revelations sent shockwaves through the ministry, captivating the attention of wizards and witches in positions of power. The Minister of Magic himself, along with the heads of various departments, gathered for an impromptu meeting to discuss the unexpected phenomenon. The room hummed with a mixture of curiosity and skepticism as they delved into the pages of Orion's literary creation. The reader was totally embarrassed with a red face thanks to the rainbow vomit he was reading from the book, some parts were even skipped just to save a little face for the assembly. To their surprise, a chaotic core dedicated a whole para to why many wizards just shouldn't buy this book and even went so far as to write right on the cover not to buy before reading that particular para. And then an entire page on how they ain't getting any refund if they bought the book, everyone in the council just sweats drop at this. Minister didn't read the book, he doesn't remember the last time he read a book so there is no way that he will be reading one now. Fudge let the worker explain the book to him, and to his surprise, the book itself was not very controversial. There was nothing in this book which was going against those purer bloods. But being a politician, Fudge immediately understood why those purer bloods were making so much noise suddenly. It's not that they didn't like what was written in the book but rather they liked it a little too much. Now lusting after the knowledge for themselves, not wanting it to spread to the wizarding world, to those mulborns, Fudge too was the same after he saw the real value of the book. Orion even gave some techniques to increase magic and refine it. Those few techniques alone could be considered treasures which a wizarding family will guard and even put up there as family magic. Orion's keen observations and insights into the just reflected on the book and some far-sighted minds already figure out that for the first time in the wizarding world, blood might not play the major role in one's power but rather practice and dedication to one's cultivation will if that exercise and techniques really worked. And to the delight and utter irritation of the ministry and those purer bloods, it worked. Maybe the results will be seen after many years of practice but there was no doubt about it that everything written in the book worked. This excited the wizarding crowd to no hell that there was finally a straight way to get stronger in magic outside of just relying on skills and gene lottery like some wizards get, for example, Dumbledore, Voldemort or Grindelwald. At the same time, it irked them that this information was out there for everyone to grab and above all, came from a Mulborn wizard. A child no less. As discussions unfolded, murmurs of discomfort echoed in the chamber. 
the revelations within the book touched upon sensitive topics, exposing layers of corruption and insecurities in the magical world. After all, the reason why the current purer bloods are enjoying so much luxury and power was because there was no strong opposition from the mole side. Their family magic really does make them superior to others in respect of powerful magic and everything but this might change now. Some of the higher-ups felt uneasy, realizing that the brilliance of Orion's work was a double-edged sword, laying bare the flaws within the very institution. Many wanted to ban it while secretly preserving the copies for themselves. But the most irritating thing out of all was none other than Dumbledore's action. Making the book's syllabus in Hogwarts was a masterstroke played by the old wizard. Now this is not just something which the Ministry can decide on its own. Dumbledore will be involved in this and when that man is involved, the entire light fraction will be involved as well. Making this a full-fledged voting game. Currently, the light fraction and the dark fraction are on a balance when it comes to Wizard Gomot voting rights. Meaning ultimately the final decision will rest on the grey side. Even an idiot can say, where they are gonna vote. Which idiot would want to ban a book like this especially if they can't have access to all those techniques and theories which Ryan shows inside it? I advise that we should ban the book, it's evil and might bring discord among us. Not to mention it was written by mud. I mean a mole-born child after all. What can a child write so important anyways, an esteemed member of the council said. I don't see why we should ban the book, considering that besides the obvious bad language which I can only say mischief of an 11 to 12 year old child. There is nothing which directs our eye towards this book. I fail to understand what's so evil you found in a book. If not anything this book is a masterpiece. We have only come here after researching the book and can say with full certainty that none of the techniques written in this book is evil or dark. And all them work. Well besides the obvious taunt about pulling out helps, someone on the opposite side said and that drew quite a bit of laughter from the members around. Even the people who dislike the mudbloods or want to ban the book have to agree that the book was funny. Some of them even had to hold back their laughter when reading it prior to attending this meeting. The dark side knew that they didn't have much sway this time around. Usually, almost all the decisions in which these fractions disagree have to be decided by votes. But the dark side knew that if they do that then they are gonna lose, there is no doubt about it. Sooner or later Dumbledore will be involved in this mess and honestly, no one wants to deal with him. Although almost all the time he is harmless in the end, a sleeping lion is still a lion. He is no tabby cat. Dash. Austria. While this mess was going on, somewhere in Austria in a certain place, a woman was holding a white book and was climbing stairs. This woman once had vibrant blonde hair but now they are white entirely. There was a time when no wrinkle existed on her fairy-like face and her beauty was known far and wide but now she was just an old woman. But it was never about her. It was about the person to whom she was going to. She stopped outside a door and after adjusting her clothes, started to slip the pages of the book. Only stopping when found the line she wanted this other person to read. Knock. Knock. After two knocks she finally enters the obviously gloomy chamber. And found an old man with white hair and two different eye colors lying there with his back supported by the wall. What brings you here, Emily? The older woman clearly reacted to this name as it had been a long time since someone called her by this name. She did not say anything but only took the book, open to the page she wanted the old man to read. And pass it through the iron bars. The man was behind bars but never let out a disappointed sigh like already accepted his reality. Seeing the book handed to him without even reply, he showed a little curiosity and started reading the page, only stopping on the same line which the woman wanted to show him. His eyes slightly widen and then he looked at the women with a questioning look. He turns the book around just to read. A chaotic core. By Orion D. Ambrosius. Don't buy before reading the first page. Chapter 75 Chapter 75, Flying Class. While the world was getting more chaotic because of him, Orion had no idea. He was currently meditating under a tree, Jedi style, away and unknown to what he had caused, and how many people have already targeted him. It was almost a month since Hogwarts started and Orion quickly went back to his usual grinding routine. Maybe the only difference was the sudden increase in popularity and attention he was getting from his peers. In a piece. Munch munch munch. Inner piece. Hey don't take that, that's mine. Internal PCE, Japanese accent. No you are not doing it right, you are supposed to breathe in when releasing magic and then breathe out calmly. Inner -e 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 PCE, -e, Japanese accent but deeper. Do you think those muscles are real? Will he let me touch it if I asked? One piece, Japanese accent but much much deeper. 
Dutch. Well, they are real and really hard. Piece of shit. Orion finally couldn't take it anymore and opened his eyes. Looking around he found himself surrounded by many students. Everyone was hovering around him like he was giving away free internet in the modern era. Currently, he is trying to meditate and get his force flowing and match the flow of nature. But this students won't let him. This all started just after a few days when his books fell into the hands of these devils, disguised in the bodies of children. The major reason they are here is to practice the technique Orion wrote in his book. But so far, they have done almost everything humanely possible except what he mentions in the book, disturbing him to no hell. Slowly and unfortunately they destroyed his peaceful training place and made it a picnic spot. Can you please not touch me, Orion said to a sixth year girl with a cold voice. She was touching his hard abs and bare muscular chest, slowly caressing them with her soft fingers. Oh, ah sorry the sixth year blushed after seeing Orion catch her, and the sheer intensity of his eyes made her blush. Orion's intention with the stare was more in the line with burning, stabbing or taking away their souls, Ghost Rider style. Sigh this was not the first time they had disturbed him like this, he usually trains without a top putting his much developed upper body on full display. It's not like it is intentional as he wants to show off, it's just a habit. But nowadays it just makes his training even harder. Mostly the female students no matter which year, get attracted towards him as not only does he naturally look very good with a godlike body but when training he uses magic to match his flow of mana with his surroundings. Making his concealing spell useless. His natural charm, which he got after absorbing the unicorn, usually comes out then. Orion examined his surroundings and couldn't help but sigh, watching dozens of students around him, making tons of noise and asking him from time to time about the technique or to help them practice core binding. At first, he helped out but now it was apparent that his own training time is getting compromised, which he can't have. They are devils, don't believe that girl's blush, my young friend, you are too young to understand the true reality of this world, we need to do something, something to protect our peace, Merlin too was annoyed. It's a mercy that early morning these students are not around, that's the only time now that I can find peace, Orion thought to himself and sighed, getting more annoyed with Merlin's antics, the man has finally fallen to the level of a weep, nothing now come out from his mouth is sane. Dash. Getting inside, Orion makes his way towards the next class while pondering over a solution to his problem, he has a place to practice but for this particular force magic, he needs an open area, near nature. The room of requirement is not the right place to practice, at least not force. Do you have any ideas Orion couldn't help but ask Merlin after his brain cells raised white flags? Sigh, maybe we better change our training ground a little. Merlin suggested seeing that Orion really was tired and didn't reply with his usual otaku-like fashion to annoy him more. But where? Orion asked while making his way towards the inner playground area of Hogwarts. Inside school premises, if I use any magic like notice me not or something similar, professors will catch me instantly. Orion whine. How about the forbidden forest? It might take some work but I can't see any better place for training than that, you know, it got a lot of magic and nature, exactly the place we are looking for, Merlin said. It's not bad, but I can't leave the school grounds in broad daylight, Orion said in confusion. Yeah. It's quite a dilemma we found ourselves in, Merlin thought and pondered for a solution. All right, I might have to teach you this in the end, Merlin said with a sigh but this piqued Orion's interest. Merlin didn't teach him anything new after he started teaching him force. He was laser focused on learning force up until now. Teach me what exactly? You will know when I will teach you. For the time being, just go to your next class, Merlin replied. Dash. Upon entering the inner playground area, Orion met all of his classmates and even the Slytherin students, all of them holding their brooms and looking eagerly around to find Mrs. Hooch. This was the first flying lesson of the year. Flying is a mandatory subject in Hogwarts for every little witch and wizard. After all in the wizarding world, besides teleportation, brooms are the only way to go from point A to point B, aka the only kind of transport. This is crucial for young witches and wizards to know how to fly. Thus from their first year to their fifth year, flying is a compulsory subject. Only in sixth and seventh year they can opt to remove it if they want as they need all the time they need to prepare for their OWLs. Even now flying lessons are shared with Gryffindor students and Slytherin students. Orion Long quit asking why the school wanted these two houses to do things together. Why the force unity bra? They are not getting chummy, chummy with each other no matter the case so why try this hard? It's just making things worse. 
he just took his extremely awesome looking broom and went towards the Gryffindor students. Black Pegasus, Orion's custom made broom, was an entirely black broom with even the brush completely black. It was a slick looking broom without many fancy decorations but it stood out among others thanks to its handle and logo, Orion put a handle much similar to a motorbike which unfolds when in use and a symbol of a Pegasus at the top of the shaft. As soon as that handle came out, everyone's attention was on Orion. Mate, is that your broom? It's wicked, Ron was the first to appear beside Orion to appreciate his broom. Hermione, Rose and surprisingly Daphne too came, besides other Gryffindor students. By now the inclusion of Daphne has been very common around Orion, so much so that even Gryffindors doesn't give too much attention to her. She never belongs to a dark family, to begin with. Greengrass's family has always stayed on the grey side of the scale. This is far better looking than what Malfoy got for his team, Ron added in a higher tone than usual, making sure that those Slytherin students were listening. Orion imagined those little snakes hissing in his direction. What is so good about it, is it's just a handle which comes out. I have never seen a broom like that. What's the name of the broom, Tracy spoke, Orion knew her only because of Daphne, they are wizarding versions of besties. They share everything together, gossip, books, clothes, ideas, potions, farts, baths, bed and maybe in the future even dicks. Orion didn't even bother responding, his broom soon would do all the talking for himself, an opinion which Rose wholeheartedly shared. Orion just looked at the brooms which the Slytherin students were holding and read the names. Nimbus 2001. Ah, I almost forgot, Malfoy to get inside the team, bribe his way in like this, Orion mused. I made this broom, there will be an entire new line of brooms coming out soon, my own creation, Orion said giving everyone on the Gryffindor side raising the same question as the Slytherin side, with a wink. This drew murmurs and many more questions from the student body. Orion though this time didn't answer, it pointless answering them now many things will be answered after today's class anyway. Will you get in the team? Merlin suddenly asked. Why the sudden question? Nothing, you wanted to join last year but couldn't because of your magic, so I wondered whether you will this year, Merlin just said nonchalantly. Orion too thought about it, he didn't like the game that much but he liked flying. Not to mention, this could be an opportunity to make connections, connections which will surely help him later on. Especially if he can play internationally. It's not hard to win this silly sport for him. Maybe, I have to think about it, Orion simply answered and kept on going. Soon Madame Hooch came and divided the entire team in again Slytherin and Gryffindor. It was Quidditch again. A better way to make children fly and keep from wandering all around the castle or outside. Not to mention, a very efficient way to find talent for the house teams. Now I need a clean match from all of you, she said and let the game begin. There were only two objectives, go on an imaginary post, and catch the snitch. It is worth noting that there is no bludger here as those are dangerous for students. Everyone flew up and soon the game started. And finally, it was Orion's chance to show what his broom can do. A great promotional place for his new broom line. There was a devilish smile on Orion's face. Please put away that smile of yours, you will leave mental scars on those poor little children, Merlin said again retorting back to his annoying otaku grandpa persona. Oh please, after this performance they will beg for me to scar them with this handsome face, Orion boasted with much confidence. 